signs as you're ready. And turn to the flag and welcome Bill Solomon to the ice as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Yes, the other playoff spot locked. We want to lock 
the first spot up, but boy, you sure don't want to injure him. So how do you not call the violation in front of the referee? Yeah. You wonder how things...
Muller is giving it to the referee for... As he leads the pros in penalty minutes against the North Coast with 80, I believe. across Kettenin from his skates to his stick. But his pass for Lettman was off the mark. Shot goes wide, Gardner finds it, feeds Spencer for a shot. Stop made by Wyant. Spencer behind the net, tries to put it in front for Lettman, it doesn't get through, but Jockums finds it. Jockums down to the corner for Spencer. Spencer around behind. It looked like he was maybe going to attempt a Michigan there for a moment which would have been really interesting because he was on his backhand. That'd be really hard to pick up the puck. <laughs> Poked free by Bear. Bear gets it back from Spencer. Shot save made, rebounds there. Spence couldn't get through to it. Hagen Moe turns it up ice. He's got Mithmanga. Mithmanga just chips it deep and the Norseman will change. Couple rebounds there for the Toros and uh, St. Cloud's gonna wanna control those rebounds a little better. Near side, Spencer, toss across, hits Bear in the knee and it lays free, Stahowiak finds it and then gets taken to the Norseman bench. Not a lot of pops up there as well, so we get a whistle. 13-13 left to go here in period number one, shot 6-3 in favor of the Norseman. Kind of a, I don't know, sloppy start or I? Yeah. I'll be honest, I've been so focused on the I, audio I know, issue. Same, I don't and have same a, with me too, I it's kind of hard to. A feel for how the game's gone. Toros do have one successful penalty kill. I know that, they dump this in. Small, rings it behind the net. It hops on Emmons, far side. Stahoyak plays the body and then takes the puck away. Kicks it back to the point. Gibbs dumps it down low. Small goes to work there. 12.56 left to play here in period number one. Emmons lost the handle. Far side, Wayman throws out to neutral. It'll be Knox who chops it to the near side wall. Pass ahead, broken up. Puck to the near side, Gibbs back up the wall. Small finds it, throws it to the front of the Norseman bench, picked up there, then taken back. Big hit by Emmons, but the Norseman stole possession. Coleman sends it in. Gibbs gets a good shot on Coleman. 12-23 left to go here in the first. Knox chips it up ice, Small stepped into, so that'll negate the icing. 
Norseman back on it, pass ahead to the near side. Jack Christ couldn't catch it cleanly. Now he has to shovel it in. Sweden plays, Mahler flips it to the near side and Casey, Casey out to neutral and Dawson. Dawson looks across, has Spence. Spence tries to hand off to Mahler. Mahler picked up, carries deep. He's forced in behind the net. Leaves it there, Mithmanga plays to the far side. That point's being covered by Casey. Shot tip, doesn't go for Dawson. Ended up in the corner, Dawson. Hands off Spencer, Spencer guides it up top. Mahler, Mahler just throws it down the wall. Spencer taking Mahler, Mahler's spot on this line, I should say. Spence trying to walk off the wall, pushed into the corner. Puck squirts free, Chris looks across, and the Norsemen will start out of their zone. They get to the red line, they'll just dump it after a long time in the defensive end. Chris pressuring, thrown around to the near side. Dawson goes tack to tape, gets stepped into. Engstrup, tied up by Lind Lindahl, leaves for Wu. Kobe Volk plays to the far side, chipped ahead. Casey on a race for it, but Worst had a step, and he'll get there first. Worst. Around to the near side and Crane. Crane touches over the line. Lindahl pokes it deep. Lindahl after it. Gets there. Tries to shovel it to the front. It's broken up. Far side. Big hit. Oh, Hannison put Crane on his backside. Near side. 10-52. Touched up ice. Ketnan. Ketnan into the zone. Chris crosses with O'Hannison a couple of times. Then tries to feed it to O'Hanny. We can't find the pass. It's around to the near side and Kettenen. Kettenen looks far side. Jockham's long shot soaked up for a whistle by Max Weiland. A quick first period, just like we saw last night, long uh, periods without whistles, and uh, the flow is starting to come a little bit more as the Toros gain some sustained pressure here in the last minute or two. The draw will be to the left of Wyant. Several fans checking in. A lot of them lost in the sound complaints. Again, I, it seems like we have it all straightened out, but the mix has sounded good in our headsets the whole game. It's been good on NATV, so I without did get a message that it's working. I, I, yeah. I, I, I hope it is. But uh, Jack O'Hanny's dad and Aunt Doreen are aboard. Andrew Jordan, Pete Spolarich, Dane Steg, Wendy Day, Kowitzes, who are sitting right down to our right. All aboard here on a Saturday night looking for the Toros to make some history. This is Lettinen. He's taken down along the wall. Puck squirts to the far side. Reese ahead. Gunderson gains the line, leaves off far side. Toss across to Blue. Blue tries a shot. Fought off by Sweden. Down low. This is an important start for Lucas Sweden. If there's been one team he's struggled against, at least statistically on the season, it would be these Norsemen. 0.898 save percentage. This is Knox trying to dance in, can't get through. And with it also potentially being a first round matchup, you'd like to see him. You build some confidence yeah. and have some success against them, which is really odd because he's uh, shut the door on some really offensively potent teams like Bismarck and uh, a team that lacks a little bit of offensive uh, what would you say push I guess <laughs> yeah. I don't know I mean St. Cloud's a, a decent hockey team but they don't have that high end offensive talent no they don't have that you know every other team in the division probably has one or two guys that you, okay we, this is the guy we have yes. to stop tonight I don't think there's anyone on St. Cloud that you single out as he's the guy we need to stop they score by committee Yeah. shot tip by Spencer I highlighted him in the Farmers Union pregame show. Spence has been so locked in lately. You know, we singled out Dawson last night as a player that we've really seen progression this year. And Spencer's another one that I yeah. that I would really um, say that we saw a, a great deal of progression as the season has went on. He he stirs up a lot. He he, yeah. he creates a lot of offensive chances with, with his hard work. I mean, he's just a hardworking hockey player. A very fast skater and an engine that seems to never run out of steam. Draw to the left of Wyant. Colby Bear digging. Bounce back to the point. Volk hands off. Gardner tries a shot. It's blocked to the corner. With Manga there. Plays a head for Chris who tips out to the neutral zone. Thrown to the near side. Guards. Let's it roll to Spencer who gives back to guards. It's taken away from Gardner and played to the far side. Spence bumped off, the puck comes to the near side. Bradley 
Former Toro sends it down the ice. It was tipped. It ends up on net for a rather easy save for Lucas Sweden. Bear over skates and then just has to punt up the wall. Spencer breaks it up, works it ahead. Bear didn't catch it cleanly. Now we'll sweep it deep. Toros will change. Trevor Stahoyak up on the pressure. Far side, stacks, forcing Reese to turn. He'll play it back to the near side. Good hit by Knox, frees it up for Small. Small looks for Stahoyak. Geyer went down hard, but Small steps in, takes it away. Feeds Emmons for a shot from a tough angle. Bouncing puck hacked at, doesn't go. Emmons guides it back to the point. Knox, long shot blocked out front by traffic. Gibbs keeps it, tries to throw it to the net. It's blocked. Gibbs stays with it. Gibbs from the slot, another shot blocked. Gibbs. Tries to put it in behind, it's taken away, thrown up the glass. Knox couldn't keep it, and now the race is on the other way. Knox wins the battle, tied up with Crane. The puck hacked deep into the Toro zone. Strong play by Stahoyak there to take Lindell off the puck. This is Emmons. Emmons gives to Small. Small tries to roll it deep. Plika back on it. Jumped back in once again. And move to the near side. Gunderson tips it out around Casey, then gains the line. No, he didn't. Moe was in by two steps, and the whistle goes. Media timeout, which means it's time for our Northern Century salute. American girls and American guys we love. For tonight's Northern Century salute, the Toros would like to salute the 91st Security Forces Group Standards and Evaluations Team. With precision and dedication, they serve not just the 1,100 Air Force Security Forces members and five commanders, but the very backbone of our nation's defense. Their expertise shines as they evaluate and certify 16 diverse duty positions crucial to safeguarding the Minot Missile Complex. And that's not all, folks. These defenders augment the 91st Missile Wing Inspector General Team, ensuring programs across the wing are in compliance with the strictest Air Force regulations. Lastly, they orchestrate group and wing level exercises seamlessly, integrating with up to five base agencies. Together, they test the balance of agility and forward aggression, all while safeguarding the world's most deadly assets. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the 91st Security Forces Standards and Evaluation Team. Classy move by the Norsemen. Usually, you don't see the visiting team paying attention much to what's going on in the building, but most of them paying attention to the Northern Century salute and tapping their sticks at the end of the script. So, A nice move by them. Draw in front of the Toro bench. Casey with Spencer still to his right as Chad Muller remains in hockey jail until I imagine about the next, next whistle. whistle. Yeah, I didn't. Let's. Who's at the? That penalty was pretty early. It should be the next whistle, I believe. There's a shot on save made. We'll see. The penalty box door stays closed for now. 137. Oh, he has to serve 12. Yes. Yeah. Because the 10, 10 starts after the two, so, so it yeah. should be. Still Pretty though, close. very close. Again, you know, we've been talking about the playoffs, and, I, and I, it, it, we're, we're clutch time here. Yeah. Let's look at the out-of-town scores in the division real quick. Austin up on Aberdeen, 3-1. And then at the first intermission, Bismarck blowing out Aberdeen 5 to nothing. Yeah, and that, that to me is the surprise. I did not expect Aberdeen to be limping down the stretch here, and I don't even know if it's limping. We haven't seen Bismarck in about a month, but... And that's not any special yeah. teams' goals or anything. It's... Five even strength goals. On 14 shots. Oof. That's not good. <laughs> Near side. Big hit. Spencer then picks up the puck. Couldn't get it towards the front. Actually, Aberdeen has the only power play in that game. That's been the only respite from the scoring. 18 seconds in, they get on the board and, yeah. and roll from there. 
This is Christ, poked free by Dawson. Casey looks to turn up ice. Casey drops for Spencer. Spencer tried to return it to Casey through worst. It didn't connect. Kobe Volk dumps it in. As much as I've been raving about Spencer's play of late, that's when I would like to see him just drive to the net and shoot. He had yeah. a lane right up the middle. Meanwhile, Wyatt with a sh drop pass and Coleman fires it in. And just like last night, it's the Norsemen who strike first. That's a tough play for a goaltender when there's a when there's a pass like that right so down low in the slot like that and and Coleman fires a, a good wrist shot into the lower right hand corner past Sweden. And the Norsemen take a one nothing lead with 6.02 to go in the first period. It's one of those I watch the replay. It's like, you know, I mean, Volk's covering his guy coming through and it's, it, it, you know, you, you, there's where you need one of your forwards picking up a guy. And that's the forward group went for the change after their rush up the ice. And a quick, quick rush the other way. The Toros just don't clean it up. But we saw the Toros respond both in the first and second period last night after the Norsemen scored. And we'll see if we can have a response like that yeah. again tonight. And that's one of the positives I highlighted during the pregame show as well was, yeah, the Norsemen struck first, but within three minutes of hockey, the Toros were up 2-1. And then when the Norsemen scored to tie it in the final minute of the second, the Toros scored before the horn and then opened the third with a goal nine seconds in. That was quite a, a final minute yeah. and start to the to the next period. So this is Letton and he has to wait as Kettenen was in offside. Now it's ahead for Kettenen. Picked off by Kyle Miller. Wyand out of his net. Swats it to the far wall. Good keep there by Gibbs. Gibbs tries to chip down the wall. It's blocked off and then it gets jammed out to neutral. Knox will take over there. Knox back on it. Lucas Sweden just did he fall on his own or did someone clip I, his legs out? I think Blue may have got him. Meanwhile, this is Lettinen with a shot. I saw Blue skating through the blue paint. I'd like to tell you shot. I'm surprised, Ken, but I'm not. <laughs> a long shot gloved and held by Wyan. You know, I'm interested to see how this game progresses. This game is so critical for the Norsemen. When you look at the standings and, and we see what's happening in Bismarck and and we know the road ahead for the Norsemen not getting any points last night <laughs> two points is pretty critical tonight to the yeah. to their playoff hope so I'm interested to see if they stay away from that type of play and try to create more offense or if they're going to stick with that grinded out style draw will be to the right of Lyon more More fans checking in. We've got Ooh. Trevor Stahoyak's grandpa, Yvonne Buffard, also checking in from Cuba. This one ahead, pass blocked off. It was intended for Gardner. Don Jacklin from Arizona. Jody Meckley asking what the Toros penalty was. It was a check from behind and then it was a two and a 10 for checking from behind, which is why Chad Muller was in the box for 12 minutes. Now the Toro Spencer and Gardner dig along the end wall. Spence trying to come out with it, got hauled down, keeps possession, now he leaves for Gardner. Gardner, he's pinned up, gets help from Bear. Bear on his backhand, has it poked away, but Spence is there in support. Spence trying to get through to the Back of the net, just got slammed into the boards. And now Spence just chopped worst in the back of the legs. He didn't like the hit. I didn't particularly love that hit either. No, he Brad. drove the back. He had this, a free hand and drove the back of his head into the into the glass. And you know, that's one thing you see in the North American League. It seems like so much more clutch and grab with the free hand is, is allowed than yeah. you see in college hockey or, or the NHL. It seems like anytime you take your one hand off the stick and your free hand on a body, it's automatically called in the National Hockey League. Well, that just isn't the case in the North American League. And 
that was an example of it where you know kind of a dangerous play when you're when you're grabbing somebody from behind with a with a free hand and pushing them forward into the boards draw will be to the right of Lyon Norseman win it use the glass to flip that out to neutral Gibbs to the near side drops it back to Knox Knox pressured by Christ throws to the far side poked up the wall into the zone comes to Hoiak. Shot blocker save. Rebound to the near side. Got it back to the point. Gibbs across. Long shot. That one soaked up by Wyatt. Shots 11 9 in favor of the Toros, but the Toros trail 1 0. The James clan checking in from Maysville, Missouri. Betsy Patterson from Vacaville, California. from all over North America since we have someone watching in yes, Cuba tonight. that may be a first. I'm fairly positive it is. <laughs> well, at least the first time they've bothered to check in yes. from Cuba. You know, it's funny how, how you, there is so many people watching all, all over, and it, it's crazy to think that. Because uh, there's a long shot by Mahler soaked up by Wyant. Traffic in front there, too, is Stahoyak and Small. Draw will be to the left of Wyant once again. And you could feel the, feel the Toros starting to change the momentum. But you know, so far, it's Max been Wyatt, tilting, yes. Yeah, Max Wyant's been up to the task. And in Lauren Spencer in Illinois. They come across for Mahler. Chip down low. Emmons tackled in front, down of the referee. in front of the referee. And now the Toros have to play keep away and wait for Emmons to get out of the zone. Stahoyak back on the attack. Tries a shot. That goes up and over. Rebound to the near side. Small down the wall. Miller behind the net. They'll dig on the far side. 2.50 left to go here in period number one. Stahoyak touches ahead. Emmons gains the line. This is Stahoyak. Up top, long shot. That goes up and over. Played down low. Jockums pinched down, turning. Jockums, the defenseman working in deep, gives to Small. No one was at the point. Muller retreats, plays ahead on the near side. It missed Colby Volk. 2.07 left to go here in period number one. Good poke by Muller, frees that up. Chad Muller into the zone, tries a shot. That goes wide, rebound to the far side. Casey leaves for Muller. Muller along the boards, chops it down for Dawson. Dawson tied up. Played to the far side, Jockums works with Dawson on the handoff. Dawson carries the blue line, turns, spins back down the wall. Pushed off the puck by Bradley. Pass across, tipped out to neutral. Meanwhile, Casey back in his own zone. He's got chopped by Blue. Ahead for Dawson. Dawson drops for Muller. Muller's shot save made. No rebound given. Boy, the and Muller needs to be careful because he already has the one misconduct tonight. You don't want to get tied up in some kind of post-whistle scrum and give the official an excuse to give you another one and end your evening. You had thoughts about the hit on Dawson in the corner as well. Well, I, I'm more, I'm so confused on Emmons getting yeah. tackled right in front of the officials, and it's like, I understand, like you're not going to get everything, but there's been two things like right in front of him, and I guess, I I, I, I don't know, but definitely su sustained pressure for the Toros here in the last five minutes. Puck to the near side and out for the Norseman. Kettenen dumps it back in. Geyer back on it. Comes to the near side, Jack Christ. Tries the far side. 
Dysart dumps it in. Knox back on it. Knox up the near wall. Kettenen. Toss across, finds Ohanison. Ohanison gives to Lettinen. Lettinen chops it into the zone. Moves it in behind for Ohanison. Final minute of play brought to you by our friends at Northern Plains Equipment. Puck wrong to the far side. No one there for the Toros. They'll have to find it in neutral. Near side, Lettinen. Lettinen gives to Ohanison who feeds Kettenen. Kettenen just throws it wide of the cage. Lettinen uses his body to protect them. Feeds Ohanison. Shot off the post. Toro fans were already rising to their feet. Meanwhile, Dysart had that puck pop up, hit him in the mouth. He got it back down to the ice. He's still checking his teeth. Dumped back in by the Norsemen. Swept to the near side. No one there for the Toros. Lindahl plays it in behind. Kobe Volk pressured. Puck pops up high in the air. Lands kept in the zone. Coleman with a long shot. It goes wide of the net. Norseman control, Lindahl, five seconds left. Poked free by Lettinen. And Coleman. Ties up with Lettinen. As the horn sounds. 20 minutes in the books. Toros out shoot the Norseman, 14 to nine. But trail one nothing. We'll keep it here for a couple of minutes. And Brad, I. I don't think the Toros got off to the start they wanted. No. Aside from the score, but I thought after the Norseman goal, the Toros responded well, just didn't solve Wyatt. Definitely more flow in the second half of the period. Uh, the, the first period, was, first part of the period was just really choppy, and then killing a penalty doesn't doesn't help that early. Uh, but the the second half of the of the period, Toros with some sustained shots and stuff, but really nothing that it stands out to me as. Grade A. Uh, I believe there was one in the slot that I would consider a grade A chance. But. Oh, Hannison's off the post yes. in the final minute was good. Spencer passed up that opportunity that was turning into what I thought was a good scoring chance. Yep. yep. But. But just still somewhat just like, I don't know, it was a, a period that kind of left you wanting more. Is that a, yeah. a fair way of describing it? The deficit 1 0 by St. Cloud. Played a period they wanted to play, right? For sure. That's their style. Their, their, their style is to, to make it difficult and uh, get those greasy goals. Their goal was a very pretty goal, too, and one that Sweden didn't have much of a, much of a chance of saving when you're in that tight with a, a pass like that. So, Yeah, I don't – well, long-time listeners will know I, I'm usually not one to fault goaltenders. I Maybe it's because I was a former goaltender, but I, I do believe probably – 80 to 85 percent of goals are going in no matter who's in net right like uh, yeah i mean even at, there, you know it seems like though like uh, uh, you can an, point an elite, out the an clear elite ones. nhl an elite nhl goaltenders get out of 9 30 ish 9 40 save percentage yeah an average goalie's 9 15 to 9 20 so you're talking about a difference of two out of every hundred shots right like, yeah yeah you know so most goals are going in yeah, no I, but I, but I you know I think when you get to this level, you you got to stop the ones where there's no traffic, yep. right? That that those are the ones that stand out to me. Tips are you know difficult, uh, but when you're getting shots with no traffic, those are ones goaltenders at this level have to make. For sure. Toros down one. Let's go back and check those out-of-town scores as well. Still 5-0. They haven't started period number two in Bismarck yet. I don't know why that one surprises me so much. but it, I certainly expected more of a comeback from, from Aberdeen after last night losing 7-2. They've now been outscored 12-2 on the weekend. Meanwhile, still... 3-1 early in the second in North Iowa. No more scoring in the second period there. Also not a lot of penalties, which... I was, that's the first thing I checked. <laughs> Is that sad that when we see the two opponents there that we're checking penalty numbers? Yeah. As we have some golf going on down on the ice. Reminder fans, the Minotauros Golf Tournament 
is coming up. It's the 12th annual golf tournament, July 1st at the Varden Golf Club here in Minot. I will not be there, but you should be. I'll be. I, yeah, I think I will be. That is both my wedding anniversary and roughly two weeks after our baby should be due, so I have a feeling. This tells you how interesting yeah. my life is when my calendar only says NHL free agency day. <laughs> so. so, yeah, that was certainly, you know, I remember when we did get, when we got married, just last summer we got married and it was NHL free agency day and the Blackhawks had already signed Bedard. I remember I'm sitting there and all my friends are, are big hockey fans and we're sitting there all day throughout the wedding day. Oh, so and so went so. Yeah, you're just checking the <laughs> just going nuts checking the X I'm supposed Twitter to be getting ready. You want to call it? Yeah. Supposed to be getting ready for the for the ceremony, and my best man and I are just sitting there, going over the uh, free agency stuff instead. But yeah, fans, July 1st at the Varden Golf Club. A foursome is six hundred dollars. A foursome with a whole sponsor, seven fifty. You can find that under the community tab, on our website, gotoros.com. We've got some billet appreciation coming up here as well. Fans, meet Jordan Gibbs and Jack O'Hannison's billet family, the Myers. Joe and Andrew were both born and raised in the Magic City. They began billeting in 2011 and have billeted a plethora of players throughout that time. Andrew works at the Minot Air Force Base in the 91st Missile Wing. Joe works at Trinity Hospital in the Environmental Science Department. They have one son, 16-year-old Ashton, who has grown up with the Toros. When asked what their favorite thing about being a billet was, they said, being able to help these individuals achieve their goals and dreams has been a great experience. Our family has grown each year. The first Toro that lived with us has since graduated college, become a coach, gotten married, and now has a child of his own. Fans, let's hear it one more time for the Meyer family. The Four Bears Casino Sportsbook has a new look. Enjoy Vegas-style betting in comfort. Play and qualify to win trips to Vikings or Raiders NFL games. Order a drink at the dedicated bar. Then kick back in a lounger and watch the full wall display. Feel the action all the way to the final moment and claim your winnings. Book it for private draft parties or game day, too. Visit the remodeled sportsbook at Four Bears Casino and Lodge, four miles west of Newtown. In life, there's good, better, and the best. The same theme applies for our car and light truck tires at Northwest Tire. We offer you good tires, better tires, and the best tires. Which choice is right for you? That depends on your tire performance needs and your budget. The choice is yours. Come in and talk to one of our tire experts, and we'll help you decide which tire Northwest is best for you. Tire keeps you rolling down the road. Tomorrow might be hard to see, but tomorrow is right in front of us. And we're always looking towards it. Investing another four billion in renewable energy and low carbon solutions through 2025. And lowering emissions by modernizing our infrastructure, bridging to a sustainable energy future. Our history sets us on our path. From the moment we're born, we begin our walk through life. We learn so we can discover. We find our passion and develop our skills. We build relationships. We start thinking about what we're going to leave behind to those we love. Let our legacy help shape yours. First International Bank and Trust. No matter your place in life, we can help you live first. The Lamplighter is Minot's premier liquor store. Whether you're looking for wine, cold beer, or a fine bourbon, stop in and browse our selection, or make a quick stop at our convenient drive through The Lamplighter Lounge and Liquor Store. As far as what Plains Egg has to offer, um, great pay, along with some of the best benefits that I've seen uh, in the job market. 
The company understands the importance of family and family values. You need to have that time with your children. Plains Ag is 100% family oriented. I love working here, very helpful. There's no problem, it feels like we can't solve when we're working together. Go to plainsag.com, fill out the application, and we'll be in touch with you shortly. At Northwest Tire, we have tires for everyone. Needs tires that are reliable and safe to get her family where they need to be. Needs a tire that's heavy duty for all of his off-roading adventures. Needs tires that can get him from point A to point B. No matter what you drive or your budget. Northwest Tire keeps you rolling down the road. We're down on the bench for the Farmers Union intermission interview. I've got Toro's captain, Trevor Stahoyak. Trevor, you've been a Toro for four seasons. Your last full two-game home weekend of your Toro career. How great is it to play in front of these fans? Oh, uh, yeah, it's awesome. Every night is the best atmosphere to play in, and uh, it gets us going definitely when we're playing here. You've been around the division, gone to any other, all the other buildings. Does any place compare to the atmosphere of the Mesa on a game night? Not even close. What's one thing you're going to miss more than anything else from game night here in the Magic City? Uh, it's just got to be got to be the atmosphere. It's, it's fun to play here, so I don't know. It's just got to be the atmosphere here. 40 minutes left in this one. A chance to hit a franchise record 10th win. Is that on your guys' mind at all, the record? Nope. Uh, we just need to pick up where we left off at the end of the period there. All right, I'll let you go get ready and figure out how to do that. Thanks for coming down. Toro's captain, Trevor Stahoyak. Life is for living, and at First International Bank and Trust, we're all about living, helping your dreams come true. Because we're not just in the banking business. We're in the first home business, the community sponsorship business, the how do I make this happen business. Making your banking life easy, so you can focus on what matters most. First International Bank and Trust, live first. A state-of-the-art hospital and medical office building built with you in mind. The new healthcare campus and medical district, now open in Minot. Trinity Health, making more possible. I think we have some pickles downstairs. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Honey. The trick to throwing well is knowing where you want the ball to go. Like how the local bankers at First Western Bank and Trust take the time to learn about you and recommend the banking services like online banking or personal loans that keep your goals on target. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. I've been canning my whole life. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Today I finished the raspberry jam. That's my favorite kind. Well, here, take it with you. Thanks, Grandma. Now for my prize collection. Each jar shows the year it was canned. That way I won't forget when I put it in here. Grandma, what's that? Oh. Your grandfather and I worked so hard for this. It's our life savings. In a jar? Canning is really the best way to preserve anything. It's true. The way we've always done it isn't always the best way. See how we're changing for the better at Aspire. Grandma, you can bank from your phone now. Oh, wow. Aspire Credit Union. Aspire to more. Circle Sanitation is a locally owned family business providing quality waste hauling services since 1980. We provide service to residential and commercial customers, as well as roll-off service for large projects and construction sites. We are dedicated to providing excellent service at competitive prices without deceptive contracts or hidden fees. For more on what Circle Sanitation can do for you, call us or visit CircleSanitation.com. At Northwest Tire, we're part of your community, and we want you to be part of our family. We're about more than tires. We're about superior customer service to keep your vehicles and equipment safely rolling down the road. 
If you'd like to join a company that truly cares for our customers and employees, come work with us and become part of our growing family. Apply at nwtire.com. Northwest Tire keeps you rolling down the road. The all-new Emergency Trauma Center. Built with your reassurance in mind. The new healthcare campus and medical district now open in Minot. Trinity Health, making more possible. We often think of frontiers as pages in a history book, a time gone by. But even in this modern world, there are new frontiers to conquer. Whether you're tending the land to grow a better tomorrow or growing a business for new opportunities, the work you do powers the world. Exploring the frontier means stepping forward, shaping the future for yourself and for those around you. First International Bank and Trust, helping you live first, one step at a time. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. Welcome back inside the Pepsi rink at Mesa Arena. Four Bears intermission report here. Glad to have you aboard. Toros trail the Norsemen 1-0. And as you could probably tell from his answers, Trevor was not thrilled to talk to me. No one down there really thrilled about anything right now. High frustration, Ken? Yeah. I, uh, I poked my head in the room, and the guys all, all know when I do that I'm calling someone out and yeah, usually in a period where we've scored, it's the goal scorer. Or last night I went with with Jacob Ingstrup since he got his first point. And as soon as I poked my head, and you could just see everyone's kind of. Well, and that's <laughs> a good that's a good sign. I mean, yeah. that period. I, I don't know. I get you know. Is it is it is it bad to say, Ken, that like we get so used to the consistent strong levels of play that we've seen through this win streak? that when you do have a period that maybe doesn't go <laughs> your direction or you have some difficulties, yeah, it looks worse than it really probably is, right? Well, and there's a lot of hockey left. we got 40 it's a, minutes It's here. a one-goal game in a period where the Toros outshot their opponent. I, as far as catastrophes go, you, look, you have to look no farther than 100 miles south of here where <laughs> Aberdeen is getting absolutely worked, right? I, Which is something we probably should would check in on because at this rate it, it's probably more now but I don't know that period just seemed to be kind of a a slog for the Toros a little bit uh, for lack of a better term I guess and, and just lacked a little flow but as the period went I felt like the, the, the ring tilted yeah. and, and when the Toros started to get more and more chances you look at that box score down in Bismarck no more goals for the Bobcats but the wings may be coming apart a little bit out of frustration. A kneeing call and then a two and a 10 for slashing on Bennett Koopel. So yeah, the Bobcats haven't scored anymore. Shots are even this period yeah, though. I guess that's probably period. a good sign, huh? And then all the way out on the Eastern part of the division. Austin now up 4-1 on North Iowa. As Austin Solani gets his second of the night in period number two to make it 4 1. I can't imagine the Bruins bumbling that lead, which makes this game all that much more important for St. Cloud. We talked about it. They need to be three points or less back of Austin heading into next weekend, which, yes. right now, if they lose tonight, they would be four back of the Bruins. So. It would mean, yes, St. Cloud has 
their shot at North Iowa next weekend. Which but, can be good or bad. But also, you don't want to have to put, if there's a time for you to slip up against North Iowa, it's probably when you have that kind of pressure. That's it. That, that's right? what, that's usually what happens, right? And I, When you look at that period and you look at how St. Cloud played, it's exactly what they scripted and what, and what they wanted yep. to do. They wanted to to, to, to plug it up and, and have it be a hard, gritty uh, uh, first period. And they capitalized when they when they got their chance, and, and that gives them the lead. So they need to just keep their pace so they can get two points tonight to keep that gap with Austin limited. For sure. And I, for the Toros, based on the score down in Bismarck, I would, even if the Toros come back in this one, I, I'm fairly confident in saying clinching the division tonight is off the table. Yeah. <laughs> Unless, so. unless something drastic happens. Yeah. But, you know, you look at that, and, and maybe, you know, if St. Cloud wins tonight and Austin wins tonight, boy, that puts Aberdeen behind the eight ball then, right? Yeah. Matt, the refs really getting it from the crowd as they came out. But, you know, as much as I would love to clinch the division in this building, I think if there's any other building that you want to clinch – the oh, Central Division going there Championship, <laughs> especially when the team chasing you is the Bismarck Bobcats. Yeah, that'd be an added. Clinching the division next Friday night in Bismarck would certainly add a little bit of fun and maybe bring back some of that heat to the Totten Trail rivalry. You know, as much as I'm, I love the Bismarck Minot games and the, that rivalry, I, I don't like having to play them four times at the end of no. the season. And, and what happens then, too, is let's say the division is solved next weekend. That last weekend, two meaningless games of hockey against your rival Bismarck. That's when stupid oh, things can happen. I yeah. know, and that's just like we need we just need to get through that without injuries and just and you know what? It's no fun playing I don't care hockey no. right before the playoffs, right? You want to be having to be, you know, on your game and, and building towards that. And I'm yeah. not saying that <laughs> I want Bismarck to to rattle off a sweep next weekend and pull that gap tight so it does mean something that that's not at all what I'm saying no. I'm just saying that you know you got to be extra cautious in those situations also well certainly though as well for the Toros right now including tonight the maximum points the Toros can get to is 95 that would include a comeback win tonight the leader in the clubhouse right now well I guess not yet in the clubhouse they'll be in the clubhouse after tonight's game finishes Lone Star is at 92 so they could get to 94 points so can it's always even if the Toros clinch the central division on Friday they still have something to shoot for to shoot for all the way down the stretch basically until the Toros lose they have something to play for the problem is there the central division is usually year in and year out such a difficult division and it's hard to finish tops in the league. It certainly is. Even with North Iowa, you look at the other divisions that are made, that clips someone on the bench, and there's a whistle finally. But, you know, they have more points than North Iowa, but I would venture to say New Hampshire, Danbury, Philadelphia, all probably easier games than North Iowa. You know, North Iowa played. Uh, yeah, I mean, North Iowa played Springfield in the Midwest, who is in sixth out of eight in the Midwest, and absolutely handled them. Yeah. So, you know, I think you look at some of these other divisions. Lone Star, oh, with their 59 games, yeah, Colorado is just record-wise as bad as North Iowa, but I would bet Corpus and Odessa aren't much better either. I mean, I'm not trying to be biased of the Central, but the last decade, yeah. top to bottom as good as you can get for, for depth in the division. Emmons dumped down, Cody Campbell livid. This is handed off to Stahoyak and Emmons just hit from behind again. After he had moved the puck, this is Stahoyak across into the zone comes Small, Small plays it to the middle, broken up intended for Stahoyak, Emmons finds it. Banks back to the point. Jockins with a long shot. Tip goes up off the glass. Knox pinches down. Noxie separated from the puck by Gunderson. Thrown to the far side. Muller can't reach that. It'll end up on net, though, so it won't go for an icing. Jockins quickly up to Muller, who touches it into the zone. He'll look to chase it down. Casey up as well. 
Casey gets there first, spins it to the front, no one home for the Toros. I thought that got out, but they're saying Kobe Volk kept that in the zone. See if the Toros can take advantage of a break. Casey trying to get to the front, leaves for Muller, oh. who just fanned on the one-timer. And Hagen Moe takes the Norseman the other way. Blue across. Tip play doesn't go, and they never connected with Blue. Blue, we missed it earlier. Hudson Blue is our Mosquito Joe Pest of the game. We played the graphic, but that was when I was still in scramble mode. No interference there. Reese takes down Chad Muller. <laughs> you know, I have never seen so many games are like this weekend I've never seen so many just blatant uh, interferences we saw two of them late in the game last night and I, you're, you're not going to see them all though like two, actually both of them last night were behind the referee but I'm just saying it's it's crazy how many just well hits and to, they to, lay. Call, to call that two and ten right off the hop against yeah. Chad Muller and then not call that and then have the other one that happened right in front of him a moment later. Which was and that had Chad bad, Muller right? standing up in the box wondering where the where the reciprocation was, right? If you set a standard, that's the standard. And I think that's all players want. They want consistency. They yeah. just want consistency. It's it's like a you know, I always go back to baseball having been a baseball player. You, you just want I don't care what the strike zone is. I just want to know what it is. <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. There's a long shot that's soaked up by Sweden, but you know, if, if you're going to call it a strike, if it's nose to toes, fine. I know I got to swing at everything, but if, if you don't know, if you don't know what to expect from the official, it makes it really hard to play the game. It puts it, you know, and I don't want the Toros to go out there and just be running interference checks, but I mean, it makes you wonder, would it yeah. get called the other way? And it, I thought last night, I thought the official actually last night did a really, really good I job. It was the same. It's. The same same, same guy, same yeah. Same crew, yeah. Well, and, different linesman, but same same referee. And he let a lot go last night, and that's, I think. But last night, I didn't see some of the blatant stuff I'm yeah. seeing tonight. Yeah, I thought last night was a fairly clean game. And, and there's only been one call this evening as well. So it's certainly not been overly one-sided. I think some, no. of, some of the frustration comes from the Toros' perspective because there's a jam play that doesn't go for Miller. I think the Toros probably play a more speed and skill game than anyone else in the division. Mm, so Biff Mark would be right there yeah, too. But you don't see as much of those interference and holds and things like that. And when teams do run those, there's a shot save made. Rebound bouncing on the near side. Fortunately, the Toro is able to get it to the wall. Miller pinches down. Yeah, we were talking last night about Austin and their, their style of play. When, when that's being let go and it's done significantly more by one side, but now Ty James getting away with yeah, quite a bit and, there. And when, yeah, he had one too many shots there where he yeah. should have probably been called. That's an offside play. Do you think, can it, does it frustrate coaches more when, when, when things are called or things are not called? Does that, does that question make sense? Yeah, I think... I think the non-calls frustrate coaches more than calls. Yeah. I really do. Calls, I think the frustration is becomes as much with the official as it is the player. Yes. Right? When you're when you're a coach, you might be frustrated, but you go, hey, the ref set the standard, you can't do that. Yeah. When when nothing's getting called and you see it escalate and escalate. Well, then games get out of hand, and then I start yeah. worrying about injuries and then and, 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 and suspensions, and I'm not saying that suspensions aren't the player's fault because they're in there, right? They're, they're doing it. But well, it I mean, escalates and escalates and escalates into something coming of it, right? And, you know, the 2 and the 10 on Chad Muller may have much to have as much to do with reputation, right? Oh, you see a lot of that. And worst, just a narrow Toros will get a call. Worst spins Gardner down before they get to the puck, and, and it's he's, call ar he's arguing with the linesman. Uh, the linesman doesn't call it. And then Coleman and Spencer get into a, a little joust. I was worried that was going to get called as well. Well, you know what? You don't. You want to settle the game down, Ken? You do. You take yeah, both you take those two both. guys. 
and, and that settles the game down. But now you let them go back to the bench, and it's like, well, now we know yep. we can do that, right? Exactly. So you just got to settle the game by taking two and, and send that message today. Hey, none of the after-the-whistle stuff, guys. Draw will be to the right of Wyant. Toro's power play, 19.8%, ranks 11th in the league. Norseman on the kill, 85.6. That is third behind just the Toros and Lone Star. Norseman win the draw and use the glass to bank that out. Colby Volk back on it. It impresses me that the kill is so strong for the Norsemen. I talk about it when we're in their building. Brad, I don't know if you've been to the MAC in St. Cloud. I have not. That is one, I think that is the only arena in the division. But No, I have not been to North Iowa either. Those are the only two in the, the division. Their I glass is about the same height as the glass in the West Rink here. I noticed that. And when you're on the kill and you want to just flip it up the glass and get it out of the zone, you can't do that it's, there. You have to be very careful. This is Kettenen. Kettenen looks in front. A tip doesn't go for Lettinen. Left in the corner, Lettinen pushed off by Miller. Reese has his pocket picked by Muller, who rings it to the far side. And Kettenen, Kettenen touches down the wall, O'Hannison. O'Hannison trying to spin off pressure, gets pinned nicely. Muller helping out. He's tied up along the boards. Scrum continues, Lettinen wins the battle, plays it down for O'Hannison, poked away from him. And they're going to call that on O'Hannison as he was falling. They call the trip, and that... Do you see that? Blue just shot Muller's stick out of his hands into the corner. I did not see that. I was looking up to the... Chopped it right out of his hands into the corner. I was looking up, looking for the replay on the trip. I, I, Ken, I'm going to say that's one of those we talked about last night. It's, it's the half to calls, right? Yeah. Stick was in the feet. Was he going down? He probably was going down without it, but you, 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 it's there. It's in yeah. the feet, right? Those are the ones they, they, they're going to have to call. So we'll go four aside for 45 seconds. Then the Toros will go back to the Papa John's PK. Toros PK is one for one on the evening. Loose puck in front. Sweden was trying to swat at it. Couldn't reach it. 36 seconds of four on four. Gibbs carries ahead, tries to roll it deep. It doesn't get through to Dawson. Dawson eventually wins it back with help from Gibbs. Leaves it up top for Casey. Long shot. That shot had eyes, but it ended up just Wide of the cage, Casey turning. Hands to Noxie, the Andover boys. Won a state championship together for Andover. For reconnecting here in Minot. Oh. Dawson trying to create, but it's Trying to up. get the puck over to Casey, who is wide open on the back door. This is Dawson chipping to the near side. Tries a shot, doesn't go. St. Cloud full strength. And now Casey, after they've been out there a while, just decides to play some keep away. Ruby Smart sets play all the way down the ice. Wyatt. That allowed the Toros to get a change. And now Stahoyak. I didn't see. How did he end up? He lost in the an net? edge. He did, did lose he? an edge, yeah. I had followed the puck to the far wall. <laughs> I looked back and Trevor Stahoyak's wrapped around the post. Meanwhile, quick shot soaked up. Good positioning by Lucas Sweden. 43 seconds remain on St. Cloud's second power play of the game. Lucas Sweden's been an interesting goaltender to watch this year, Brad. I think he's a smaller goaltender. He'll remind the Toro fans of Nick Grabko, but a totally different or, style. Or Dop. Yeah, but just a totally different style. Nick Grabko was super athletic. He, I, he used to remind me of a Dominic Hasek, Arthur's Urbe type goal. Uh, yes, right? he was kind of an Arthur's Urbe. That would be a perfect, yeah. yep. Whereas Lucas Sweden, despite being smaller, is still the classic butterfly, as we see right there. And he's definitely a classic butterfly, but, you know, when he does go down, there is areas up top open, but I haven't noticed that teams have glaringly taken advantage of that this year. He's I done it. When they have, he's done well to get the glove or yeah. blocker up. Yeah. 
But an 8-9-8 eight, eight save percentage against the Norsemen coming into play tonight. But overall in the season, he's on point nine three yeah. nine. Like that's that's elite. Yeah, <laughs> and that's like we talked about earlier. You'd l love to see him build some confidence. I'm sure this game certainly, at least so far, thirteen of fourteen, at least correcting those numbers somewhat, bringing him back to his season average. Still fifteen seconds left to kill for the Toros. It's in behind the net for coming. Coming leaves for Weeman. Weeman drops it down low. Coleman. Coleman back to Weeman. Layman back to Coleman behind the net. Trying to come out front and feet of Miller. Shot blocked by traffic. It ends up in the corner. Toros come full strength. Ohanison out of the box. Coming, trying to drive the goal line. Shot from in tight, doesn't go. Rebound. Caroms to the near side. Hash marks. Emmons pressuring there. Puck poked ahead. Could be a two on. Oh, Spencer could have been on a break if Ohanison. Would have been able to reach that. It was just out of his reach. Now it's ahead for Ohannis, and he's met at the wall, and the puck carries back down deep into the Toro zone. Big hit by Emmons on the near side. Emmons probably been our most physical player tonight. Yeah. And this is Emmons, and this is certainly not a criticism. Meanwhile, Ohannis taken down as he's rushing up ice. Cody Campbell's face is as red as the Helmets in front of him on the bench. <laughs> I don't even have a comment. <laughs> Far side. Long toss ahead. I was starting to talk about Emmons. I'll save that thought for later. Casey trying to feed Muller. Doesn't get through. James with a good keep at the blue line. Lindahl steps into him, though, and gets it out to neutral. Absorbs a good hit from Chad Muller, but Hagen Moe's up ice. Moe sweeps it to the front. Shot blocked by Mahler, Adam Mahler forces his way up the ice, gets into the zone, tries a shot, it goes wide, oh. Karam's back in front. Back in front Ryan. and through the legs yeah. of the goaltender. Reverse five hole, it came from behind him out front. This is Knox, Knox with a move, gets a man down, oh, then he just no. lost it off his stick, Crane looking to go the other way. Ty James watching him, Crane in, Ty James did well to not give him a lane to the front. Puck ends up in the corner. I don't know if you noticed there, Ken. Ty James was heading off on a line change. Ingstrom was coming on, and they were aware enough to see Knox lose the control of the puck there, so there's still a Toro's back. So Ingstrom jumped right back in the bench, and James stayed on the ice. Meanwhile, Worst heads up ice for the Norseman. Chris crosses into the zone, then drops a pass. Shot blocked to the corner. Worst goes to the front and hits Knox. This is ahead for Dysert. Dysert carries in on the near side. Delays, then tries to feed it down low. Blocked by Lettinen. In behind the net for Ingstrip. Binger plays it into the Norseman bench for a whistle. 10.45 left to go here in period number two. Toro still trailing 1-0. Shot 16-15 in favor of the Norsemen, which means they've outshot the Toros this period. Seven to one. Does not seem that bad though, no. does it? Ken? I mean, I know we're not we're not offensively taking it to them at all this period, but boy, I thought we would have had a little bit more than that. We've had a couple crazy plays with the puck rebounding back behind from the backboards through the goalie's legs. It was a scoring chance, but. Uh, Pretty quiet on the, on, the, on the chances for the Toros. Draw to the left of Sweden. This is picked up by Ketnin. Ketnin hacks it deep. Puck thrown to the near side. It'll carry him. Out to neutral. Dumped right back in. Yeah, it does not feel like the Toros have been outshot 7-1 this period. I'd be interested to see the shot attempts. Meanwhile, Wayman... Nifty move on Jockums and Whoa. Lucas Sweden somehow hung with him. Gets a leg pad on out. that. Now a shot tip out front doesn't go. Coleman bumped down as he redirected that. I don't know that I've seen Jockums get walked like that all year. Ooh. He's been a steadily quiet defenseman for the Toros. Earned a spot on the top prospects roster. I just picked that off. Long shot, gloved and held. Did you just see what that 
Kenton and one of the players on St. Cloud had gotten into a scrum during play on the blue line and the linesman grabbed Kenton and from behind and held him. I did not During see play. Okay. I did not <laughs> I did not see that. It was off the puck as you mentioned. You know, an interesting period and boy the longer this goes the more difficult it's going to be for the Toros, right? Yeah. It, it, you start to get frustrated, and, and, and that, that frustration, you, you're starting to see it. Second period media timeout. Fans, if you are watching at home, you can still join the Toros Fan Appreciation Dash giveaway. Open up your Toros Hockey app or go to Dash app.io you can win normally it's an auction but on fan appreciation weekend you can win a team signed goal stick team signed player or player signed game use sticks or assuming we get one tonight the toro's first goal puck and i and i also believe the auction from last night the the benefit auction yes. for, for donald rosted yes is still going on and you get some great prizes there a brandon week kings weekend yep. i think i'm gonna throw some money down on that one myself i enjoy going up and watching the week kings play and you got the, the Mason Morelli jersey and, and a Colby Enns uh, North, Northern, Northern Michigan, Michigan yeah. jersey. So a uh, great Toros alum. And, and all boy. The, all of the, all the proceeds from that go to uh, Rooster in his fight against liver cancer. So please, fans, if you're, if you're able, jump in on uh, the Dash auction for Rooster and his family. And while you're there, Enter for a chance to win what is usually our game day auction, but is a free giveaway this weekend. Near side, Ty James picks that off in neutral and then throws it up into the crowd. Oh, that got a fan right on the knee. I'm not trying to be insensitive, Ken. Knees better than head. Yes. I saw a little, a little guy got one last night in the ear and hopefully he's feeling better today. That's, that one stung him. He is still hopping almost, I, We shouldn't be laughing, but almost comical when you get one in the, the knee. That'll, yeah. that'll, you'll survive that one. But boy, I, uh, always scarier though when you see pucks go up into, into the stands and it, it, go, it happens the quick. Press box. Yeah, we, hey, we had lost one, a couple of TVs back there. We had one go over our head here yeah. last, last, the last year I did this and uh, it, it happens fast. This one dumped down in the Toro zone. Of course, Noah Grant, who's been on with me the last few years, used to laugh. As this is a quick up for Emmons. Emmons in behind the fence, shot save made by Wyan as Emmons tried to go high to the blocker side, just didn't get it quite high enough. Emmons behind the net, sweeps it to the near point. Gibbs tries to throw it towards the cage, it catches the glass. Far side, Stahoyak. Stahoyak working. Works it down low for Emmons. Emmons trying to get it out front for Small, but it's blocked and now bounces out to neutral. Knox has trouble settling it down. Hit by Moe. Knox still gets it up ice. Small comes across for Emmons. Emmons trying to drive the net. Gets dumped down. And it's out to neutral for Knox. Volk back up for Small. This is offside, so Small has to peel off. Near side, Woogie watches as Moe dumps it in. Sweden hands to Ingstrup, back across to Kobe Volk. Near side, Stahoyak. Stahoyak chips it up the ice, broken up. Thrown ahead, coming, working on Ingstrup, drops it for Coleman. Coleman, shot blocked by Ingstrup, it ends up in behind the net. Ingstrup working there, looks up ice, blocked off by coming, but picked up by Casey. Casey. Can't split the defense as he gains the line. And it's rolled back out to neutral. Stahoyak's been trapped out for a while. Can he get to the bench? Now he will as it's dumped in. Saved by Wien as it ended up on net, the dump in. Miller turns to the near side, finds Wayman. Up ice for Coleman. Coleman dumps one in on Sweden that he swats to the near side wall. Ty James, another player who we've talked about the development of guys over the course of the season, has taken huge strides. The 05 defenseman. This is Casey. Casey feeds Kettenin. 
Kettenen spun down. It's rolled into the offensive zone for the Norseman. James wins a battle behind the net. Kettenen swoops in and takes it away. Dump in goes wide of the cage. Worst pressured by Kettenen, throws up the near wall, finds Berg, who will just bounce it towards the cage, and Sweden will cover. 6.52 left to go here in period number two, and we have more pushing and shoving. And Brad, you know, we talk about this defense core for the Toros and its youth, Ingstrup in 06, Ty James in 05, Mahler, Gibbs, Knox, our 04s. <laughs> you know, That's a bright future. Yeah. I, you're bringing back five defensemen for sure next year <laughs> that all have significant experience. Funtek is a 20-year-old, correct? Yeah, Funtek's a 20-year-old. Jackson is, is a 20-year-old as well. Woogie, an 04 as well. <laughs> so there's six. You're bringing back your... Your whole defense. Yeah. I mean, I'm not you're missing a, a couple key parts there, but yeah, certainly you're, you're bringing back six of your eight, right? Yeah. And I would and two, and I would two of those six will be back for at least one more year after that. And I would suspect we'll have some young prospects pushing them too, which will only make our core better, right? For sure. As that pops up and out of play, nice catch by a fan in the front row. That one didn't have quite as much heat as the last one. <laughs> no, that one fell right into her hands, but still a nice catch. That, that, that was the money puck, so she can go get herself a prize as well. So, I believe fans who catch the money puck get $200 in free slots at Four Bears Casino. Not a bad deal. Not a bad deal at all. Unfortunate for the fan who took it off the knee that it, that was not the money puck, that, at least. You know, that guy probably didn't even get the puck. Yeah. This one blocked off. It comes to the near side. Is that hockey etiquette, yeah. though, that you give the puck to when the person someone that got smoked, drilled? Yeah, right? I would think so. Out. And now we've got a quick cover by Wyan on a dump in as Bear was crashing down. Wyan's been very good tonight. Yeah. It's fun. I don't have the, actually I do have the head-to-head -head numbers still in front of me. On the season, an 8-7-8 against the Toros for Wyan, an 8-8-5 for Manzella. 0.91 on the seasons for, for him. So over 900, yep. you know kind of that magic number right and it's funny you know, fans and, and staff alike all have their opinions that at times will be different from coaching staffs and the the PA guy in St. Cloud and I, I feel terrible I'm blanking on his name right now but every time we go there and Manzella gets the start against us when I'm talking to their PA guy <laughs> he's always telling me I wish we'd just go with Wyatt he's a better goalie <laughs> 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 and I, that goes for an icing. <laughs> and I, well, I, we all have our th favorites, yeah, right? Say, other than watching them against us, in which case both Lyon and Menzella have had pretty even numbers against us. You know, I have a hard time saying for sure that Lyon's better than Manzella, but their PA guy is just locked in on, on Max Lyon being the guy. <laughs> I'm not putting you in a hard spot here, Ken, but you know, you think back over all the years with all the great goalies we've had. Who comes to your mind as, as your favorite to watch? You know, I go back to that 14-15 season and Ate told Oh, I was going to say the exact same thing. I, I, I love watching him. You know, he was amazing. He, uh, you know, Nick Grabko, who I brought up earlier, maybe, maybe was the most fun between the whistles to watch just oh, yeah. because of his, again, smaller size and having to play that wild style. Spencer turning, can't hold on. But uh, Keenan Rancier, Keenan Rance, Tyler Parks, uh, a lot of good goals. A lot I mean, of good goals. Tyler Parks is 32 and still playing pro hockey. He's playing in. Uh, I just looked it up earlier this year. I can't remember. He had, last year, I know he was split between Atlanta and and now Hudson Blue is going to go to the box for something behind the play. Slash, a slash on Gardner. So the Toros will go to the power play. But Toros second power play of the night. As we get a look at the Toros point leaders on the season, O'Hannison, Letton, and Ketton, and I imagine 
they're about to come over the wall here to start this power play. Going back to Tolvin and but human highlight reel though. Yeah. Samu yeah. Lankalo was another Lankalo, good goalie. Lankalo Keenan was, Rancier. But I, what to me gives Ate Tolvin the edge over all the other Toro, Toro goaltenders, he was when you say goalies are weird. I, I go back to that playoff series against Bismarck in 14-15 and they're even though it's a playoff game, there ended up being a, a fight, and then other guys, not a full-on line brawl, but other guys all grabbed each other. And I looked down to the other end of the ice, and Ate Tolvanen is sitting on his crossbar. <laughs> <laughs> he jumped up and was sitting on top of the net. <laughs> but that's how he was. Yeah. This is Kobe Volk. Gives to the far side. Kettenin gains the line. Toro's on the first Western Bank and Trust power play. Muller kicks to the stick, drives, tries to leave it, but the pass is tipped and worst will clear it all the way down. Kobe Volk back on it. Needs one more to tie John Lazat for career goals by a Toro defenseman. Far side, Kettenen touches it back. Kobe Volk looking for it. There it goes off Wyan's glove and into the corner. I love where he was aiming that shot to the far side and low so that if nothing else, it creates that rebound opportunity. This is worst trying to attack shorthanded. The Norsemen do have seven shorthanded goals on the year. Meanwhile, Kettenen just, or I'm sorry, it was Lettinen who was knocked down as Kettenen was up ice. Dropped back for Lettinen, leaves off far side O'Hannison. Did you see what happened to Lettinen? I did not. Yeah, uh, Worst grabbed him in a headlock and put him to the ground, but Lettinen had given him a, a little bit of a shot. I, I, I'm okay with letting that one go. They both kind of <laughs> maybe had it coming. This is Stahoyak. Or again, take yeah. them both. Yeah. Far side, Dawson. Dawson rolls it deep. He should be the first to this. Tries to play it across for Stahoyak. It's tipped up off the glass. And now Bradley looking to go the other way. Bradley for Dysert. Dysert. Around behind the net. Dicer trying to keep it away from the Toros. Mahler takes it back. Tries to one-hand it ahead. It's picked up by Casey. Casey fights through, but then turns it over, and it's sent the rest of the way down the ice. Blue released from the penalties box. The Norseman back to full strength. Not an impressive power play no. there, Ken. This is Dawson. Who tackles Lindahl, who jumped up to grab that puck out of midair. Blue feeds it for Jack Christ. Christ taken to the boards by Colby Volk. Chopped up the wall. Coleman keeps it. Christ shot save made. Rebound poked to the near side wall. Toros hoist this out to neutral. Geyer looks across. Coleman. Shot save made. Rebound. To the side of the net, Coleman can't reach it. Woogie kept it away from him, but now it comes back to Coleman, puts it in front. And Gunderson. It's a sell job. Well, and also he was slotting on, on his knees, and he got hit by a follow through of a pass. I, that's not just not a penalty, right? <laughs> Stahoyak hooked down. On an offside play, the whistle goes. Twelve or two twelve left to go here in period number two. Palindrome up on the clock. I I feel the crowd starting to. I don't want to say be restless, but yeah. lulled because uh, it's not often the Toros go thirty eight minutes without a goal. No. In their home rink. No. Really, anywhere this season, the Toros. Discussion here with the St. Cloud coach. They, they want to know why the penalty wasn't called. I understand that, and, and, I'm, and I'm fine with that, but how come it doesn't seem to reciprocate? How come they only talk at certain points to the coaches, yeah. right? I, now they're over now they're Cody over there. I don't even know what you're going to say. <laughs> Cody had no interest in talking to him. <laughs> Toros three and a half goals a game, allowing just 1.98. 
Toros control the draw, pass ahead, misses Gardner, and this will go for an icing. Do you sum it up by out of sync tonight? Yeah. And I would have expected that last weekend against Austin coming off the off weekend and. Yeah. Boy, I think that off weekend was timed well. Yes. I, I, I do, I really think that uh, it was, you know, we had, a, we had an off weekend to start the season right after the showcase. Which Two was, weekends off Which was showcase. atrocious, right? Um, and then. And I will say that's not anything that was done by the, simply the Mesa Arena didn't put the ice in until the yeah, first weekend a, of October. It was, a and the, it was yeah. not, I mean, I'm not blaming anybody. Yeah. I'm just saying that it, it didn't help the team. Let's put no. it that way. And then the timing of the second one, though, came at a real good yeah. time, I thought. Yeah, the two weekends after the showcase it was really tough as there's a quick shot that goes wide. Norseman were he in the zone. Another long shot, that's blocked by traffic, swung to the far side, Spencer. Jammed ahead. Not out though. Ty James will try the near side. Gardner didn't know it was coming. Now it's out front, Lindahl shot blocked by Gardner, who got a good stick on it. The Norseman still attacking, a shot that goes up off the glass. Loose in front, Spence maybe got away with a hook there on Berg. James without a stick. He does retrieve that now. Gardner spins it for Bear. Bear looking for Spencer. Back to Bear. Shot blocked up. And out of play. I, I'm just guessing here. I, I don't want to say for sure. I haven't talked to Ian Spencer about it. I mentioned it in the pregame show. He's got three posts in the last three weeks. And he has been very past first tonight. I'm wondering if he's feeling a little snake bit or if. I don't know. You know I mean, I, quite honestly, on that play when he gained I, the line, I, I was almost hoping he would just dump it in and let's let's get some zone, you know. Yeah. I, I didn't feel like that play was going to go anywhere with the proximity of the St. Cloud defenseman. So I, I don't know. Do you, do you think, I, I guess when I played, I didn't think that way in those situations, but. Final minute of play here in period number two. Toro still trail one nothing. Loose puck in front, shot stopped by Sweden, who came out far to challenge, or maybe not. Not credited with a shot. Maybe that hit a man in front. Meanwhile, Miller dumps it down low. Up ice won't go far enough for icing. Near side, Small can't take that away. It's out to neutral, Emmons lost it to Worst. Across for Christ, back for Worst, who's driving the net. And then he got Sweden in the mask with his stick on the way through. Sweden not thrilled with the non-call on that. This is Coleman, can't get by Wu. Coleman chops it to the far side, the horn will sound to end the period. 40 minutes in the books. Toro's trail. one nothing. And you can feel the restlessness in you the building. You can. It is very Which. quiet. And you know. It feels like a game of maybe more importance than it really yeah. has. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the true importance is, it, it's important. Don't don't get us wrong. Like yeah. Every game's important. But the true importance is not that high. But I'll tell you what, it it's tense in here right yeah. now a little bit, you know, which is good. Yes. We want our fan base to be that. We want our players to feel that intensity. But we got to see a much better Toros team here in the third period because uh, it not, not a real clean game, a, a sloppy kind of been a sloppy weekend as a, as a whole. Yeah. You know, overall, though, there have been good stretch. I didn't think that was a particularly strong second half of the period. No. And, and I think shots reflect that. Yeah. But I did not. I mean, I, I thought we had a really strong six-minute stretch in the first period, and I thought we had about a four-minute stretch in that period. 
uh, in which we were strong, but those are small victories when we're playing a, a team fighting for their playoff lives that we could pretty much end, right? Yeah, and as we have some chuck a puck action going on here in the building. Let's check on those other scores we mentioned probably not going to have to worry about clinching the division one way or the other tonight due to what's going on down in Bismarck. That still would seem to be the case, six nothing now. As they're early in period number three. Shots have evened up a bit, but still a six one score is not going to make you feel very, or six nothing score, not gonna make the Aberdeen Wings feel better about a, a better performance shot wise in period number two. And down in North Iowa, 5-1 in favor of the Bulls now. Austin Solani with a hat trick for Austin. I, you know, we talked about it, and coming into this weekend, I think if you would ask most Toro fans who they would have wanted out of Aberdeen, Austin, or St. Cloud, if you would ask most Toro fans, I'm not saying players or staff, but Fans, the answer probably would have been St. Cloud. Yeah, it would have been either St. Cloud or Aberdeen. And believe it or not, it sure wouldn't be Austin in my book. I, I, well, and what I was going to say is after last weekend and now the way this weekend is gone. Well, I think it might be Aberdeen now. Yeah. But, I mean, that's probably an unfair uh, bias judgment based off a two-night performance, which probably isn't fair. But, right. Uh, you know, I... I don't know. I think you'd say St. Cloud or Aberdeen would would be who you'd choose. But I'll tell you what I've learned the over the St. years. Cloud is, well, I'm, what I'm getting at is the way St. Cloud has played this weekend. Yeah. They, I, may, they may not be the team you want to see in round one. No. I still would feel more comfortable with them than I would Austin, though. And, and Even with the scores last weekend. I, you know, last weekend's scores surprised me a lot. Did it feel like a seven to nothing game? It did. did it I, did. It I'm was... watching it on TV, so it's different okay. when you're in the building. It, it's different. But I just. At no point when we were in that building yeah. did it feel like Austin was in that game at all. The, 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 and... the care meter for them did not look real high in the no. Saturday night. But Friday night, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's the history of Austin in my night in the playoffs that has my. My fear factor higher than it should be, right? Yeah. Although the year we won the Central Cup, that was with a sweep of Austin. Yes. So, but I certainly wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the reason I, I say that is I know what style they're going to play in the playoffs. And it's a style that lends itself to playoff to hockey. To playoff hockey. That's kind of probably more why I am... You know, saying what I am about the about or giving the awesome Bruins such high praise. So we will head out to commercial break. We'll be back with the Farmers Union inter Mission interview, and then Brad and I'll come back after that and chat a little bit more about what's coming up along the way. Send you out to commercial. State of the art hospital and medical office building built with you in mind. The new healthcare campus and medical district. Now open in Minot. Trinity Health, making more possible. I think we have some pickles downstairs. Oh. <laughs> Honey, <laughs> got some good news and some bad news. <laughs> the trick to throwing well is knowing where you want the ball to go. Like how the local bankers at First Western Bank and Trust take the time to learn about you and recommend the banking services like online banking or personal loans that keep your goals on target. First Western Bank and Trust. You can bank on us. I've been canning my whole life. It's one of my favorite pastimes. Today I finished the raspberry jam. That's my favorite kind. Well, here, take it with you. Thanks, Grandma. Now for my prize collection. Each jar shows the year it was canned. That way I won't forget when I put it in here. Grandma, what's that? 
Oh. Your grandfather and I worked so hard for this. It's our life savings. In a jar? Canning is really the best way to preserve anything. <laughs> it's true. The way we've always done it isn't always the best way. See how we're changing for the better at Aspire. Grandma, you can bank from your phone now. Oh, wow. Aspire Credit Union. Aspire to more. Circle Sanitation is a locally owned family business providing quality waste hauling services since 1980. We provide service to residential and commercial customers, as well as roll-off service for large projects and construction sites. We are dedicated to providing excellent service at competitive prices without deceptive contracts or hidden fees. For more on what Circle Sanitation can do for you, call us or visit circlesanitation.com. At Northwest Tire, we're part of your community, and we want you to be part of our family. We're about more than tires. We're about superior customer service to keep your vehicles and equipment safely rolling down the road. If you'd like to join a company that truly cares for our customers and employees, come work with us and become part of our growing family. Apply at nwtire.com. Northwest Tire keeps you rolling down the road. The all new Emergency Trauma Center. Built with your reassurance in mind. The new healthcare campus and medical district now open in Minot. Trinity Health, making more possible. We often think of frontiers as pages in a history book, a time gone by. But even in this modern world, there are new frontiers to conquer. Whether you're tending the land to grow a better tomorrow or growing a business for new opportunities, the work you do powers the world. Exploring the frontier means stepping forward, shaping the future for yourself and for those around you. First International Bank and Trust, helping you live first, one step at a time. Down on the bench with Darren Armstrong from Trinity Health and Trinity Sports Medicine. Darren, it's National Ath Athletic Trainer Appreciation Month, so we wanted to have you out here. Last night was Trinity Sports Night, but we wanted to help raise some money for for Don Rostad so we're talking to you tonight instead you know you've been working with the Toros now pretty much since the start of the new year in a in a day-to-day -day role what what's that been like for you uh, they're a good group of guys they um, um, they're mature um, mature um, guys that do what I ask them and that's a that's a big thing you know when we ask them to do something you know it's for the ideas to get them better and back on the ice and strong as strong as they can as fast as they can so them following through and and being good partners in that plan is a big deal for us you know and that's a big thing for you guys as well everyone at this point in a hockey season is a little banged up but you you guys are what keep the players on the ice and able to perform you know, how how much work goes into it fans see you on the bench and they see you run out when someone's injured but you're doing a lot more behind the scenes that fans don't get to see on a day-to-day -day basis well, it's been pretty quiet tonight so far, and that's how I like it. But, um, you know, today is actually um, National Physicians Day, so we couldn't do what we um, do without Dr. Mattern. She was down here um, earlier today helping me with an athlete so we could play today. So she's a big part of our team. Trinity Health's a big part of our team. Um, so, um, we're, you know, it's, it's a team effort for sure. You mentioned Doc Mattern. She's been with us from the very beginning uh, from day one with the Minotauros. She's done a ton for our athletes over the years, especially guys who have had severe injuries. You know, how much, you know, how much support does she provide you guys, and, and how much faith do you have in Doc Mattern? Well, she gives, she donates um, basically all her time. Um, she's there for the team. Um, like I said, um, this morning I gave her a call about 9.30. By about 10 o'clock she was down here um helping me with an athlete um otherwise that athlete probably would have been borderline whether he was going to be able to play today with what we had to help him with so um it's you know her support is um is outstanding you know trinity sports medicine treats more than just the toros you treat all the major programs in this building and ton of the athletes throughout minot and other sports as well at the high school and and higher levels you know, is there any atmosphere that you've had here though in minot that beats the Mesa Arena on a Friday or Saturday night? No, it's very good. You know, Friday night football games in the fall are a different deal around here. Basketball are state tournaments that we cover, but my team as a whole, we'll cover about a 
over about 100, 120 um, sporting events a month. So it's a busy time of year for us, but um, that's what we like to do. All right, I'll let you go take care of the guys. Thanks for giving us a minute of your time. Darren Armstrong with the Trinity Sports Medicine. Samantha Van Singer, Samantha Van Singer, you are today's Bones Barbecue Pig Race winner. Samantha Van Singer, please head to the merch stand, uh, claim your prize. Since 1977, Northwest Tire's been your partner on the road for over 40 years. People have put their trust in our quality brand tires and expert service on the roads and in the fields for work, play, and travel. Northwest Tire, keeping you rolling down the road. Nothing has embodied the American spirit like the family farmer. Year after year, they continue to work the land and plant their crops. Through droughts, floods, and uncertain markets, they keep that spirit alive with another crop harvested for the next generation. And for that, we tip our hats to them. Farmers Union Insurance, protecting those that protect America's food source. The Four Bears Casino Sportsbook has a new look. Enjoy Vegas-style betting in comfort. Play and qualify to win trips to Vikings or Raiders NFL games. Order a drink at the dedicated bar. Then kick back in a lounger and watch the full wall display. Feel the action all the way to the final moment and claim your winnings. Book it for private draft parties or game day, too. Visit the remodeled sportsbook at Four Bears Casino and Lodge, four miles west of Newtown. In life, there's good, better, and the best. The same theme applies for our car and light truck tires at Northwest Tire. We offer you good tires, better tires, and the best tires. Which choice is right for you? That depends on your tire performance needs and your budget. The choice is yours. Come in and talk to one of our tire experts, and we'll help you decide which tire Northwest is best for you. Tire keeps you rolling down the road. Tomorrow might be hard to see, but tomorrow is right in front of us. And we're always looking towards it. Investing another four billion in renewable energy and low carbon solutions through 2025. And lowering emissions by modernizing our infrastructure, bridging to a sustainable energy future. Our history sets us on our path. From the moment we're born, we begin our walk through life. We learn so we can discover. We find our passion and develop our skills. We build relationships. We start thinking about what we're going to leave behind to those we love. Let our legacy help shape yours. First International Bank and Trust. No matter your place in life, we can help you live first. The Lamplighter is Minot's premier liquor store. Whether you're looking for wine, cold beer, or a fine bourbon, stop in and browse our selection, or make a quick stop at our convenient drive-thru. The Lamplighter Lounge and Liquor Store. As far as what Plains Egg has to offer, I'm great pay along with some of the best benefits that I've seen uh, in the job market. The company understands the importance of family and family values. You need to have that time with your children. Plains Ag is 100% family oriented. I love working here. Very helpful. There's no problem. It feels like we can't solve when we're working together. Go to plainsag.com, fill out the application, and we'll be in touch with you shortly. Taro fans, these are the final four for the Dakota West Credit Union Fan Pick of the Game. Submit your final votes now. Welcome back inside the Pepsi rink at Mesa Arena. We've got the Four Bears Casino and Lodge intermission report. We're going to try and give away some money here. Not the grand prize, not the $10,000 shot. No one made their chuck a puck into the tire, but still a chance. $553, I think, is what we're shooting for tonight. It's been a few weeks since someone's made it in the tire. Yeah. That's all. And because uh, it happens quite a few times a year, it seems like. And it's been a 
a stretch of uh, no ten thousand yeah. dollar shots. We are uh, a little behind the scenes business. We pay, we buy five shots at a time from the insurance company. Okay, that so way we always have a few in reserve. In reserve, yeah. Right. Do they? Is there an expiration date on them? The end no, of the season? No, no. That they actually. It, technically the end of the season, but if we don't use all five, they'll kick them over and give us a and discount then, at sure. the start of next year. So, but uh, yeah, it seemed like we had to buy a bunch of shots early. Yeah, it seemed like we had. A we had. Yeah, I don't think we've used one since January. And it's fun to you. I mean, that's oh, what yeah. we want. We want. Well, that, that's what I always tell people. Hey, the same thing with the dice toss we do here at the rink before the game. We want people to win. We get the insurance policies. It, it costs us a couple hundred bucks for the insurance policy. After that, I want to give you the hundred thousand dollars. Absolutely, right? that's like, the whole goal, right? Like we had, uh, we had someone hit the the ten thousand dollar hole in one at our golf tournament last summer, and same thing. It was a two hundred dollar insurance policy. By all means, please take the ten grand. Get a hole in one, yes. But we'll turn you over to the PA and Josh Carlock for the. Chuck a puck shots. Hundred and fifty-three dollars. Silence is calling. It's going. Oh, almost. So so close. Second shot for two hundred and seventy-six dollars. Just a bit wide. It's third shot for a hundred and thirty-nine dollars. Oh, make some noise for him, fans. Oh, All bro. right, folks. You know, Brad, I think, looking at the board, I haven't thought about this before, but over the offseason, we may have to change the color of that. A little hard to see the holes when you're shooting from center you with the white board. Yeah, yeah you, we should uh, change it to, like, Toro's Burgundy yeah. with, the, you know, like a gold... Arrow or or it's uh, our friends at Trusted Auto, so maybe paint the board yellow, right? It's just just so it stands out, right? Yeah. Because again, we want to give away that money. <laughs> you know, we've actually, when you think back, we've had a lot of pretty impressive shots that people have made. For yeah. Not the ten thousand, but for the I mean, some the prizes that are five hundred dollars yeah. and plus. You know. Well, it's a progressive pot when when you don't make it into the tire. The pot is 50% of the chuck -a puck sales. Which have been high. Yeah, and we, we typically sell a couple hundred chuck -a pucks a game. So that tells you, you know, we've had not 10,000, but we have had the pot reach 2,000 before, which is also a pretty good prize. You know what I miss, Ken? Do you remember back in, like, year three and four when they used to have the shot for Vegas? Yes. That was fun. It was yeah. a it was a tournament through the year. Yeah, it was a, a progressive. Uh, it's that eight puck shootout game. Eight that puck we still shootout. Play, yeah. And I believe uh, I believe uh, Steve Silseth yeah. won that. Steve Silseth won it one year. And uh, yeah, just a a fun game that we probably don't play as often as we could. I, part of it is you have to get the right players. You do, you do, right? and that know what's going on. And know how, it, for fans who haven't seen our eight puck shootout game, we put two pucks at each face off dot down one side of the ice. And Well, we put it on both sides of the ice, but two contestants and whoever sinks the most, you but shoot from each dot each you direction. have to shoot one at each, each direction. So there's essentially two full ice shots that you have to hit. And if you can get one person who can do that consistently and another person who can't do anything, yes. you can get to some blowouts quickly. So, Quick update on Central, Region sco yeah. Central Division scores before we get started here. Third period, eight minutes to go. Bismarck up 8 nothing on Aberdeen. And in uh, North Iowa, 5-1 to one in favor of the Austin Bruins. 6-16 to go in that one. So a... Even if the Toros come back tonight, they will not be able to clinch the division barring what would be one heck of a collapse by the Bismarck Bobcats. Epic proportions. Yes. I don't know that I've ever even heard of a team blowing an eight nothing lead in a hockey game before. 
Um, I haven't either, and I'm a Calgary Flames fan. <laughs> We've got a few six nothings that we've, saying, we've I, accomplished, but there, uh, there was a five nothing lead that the Flames blew. in the playoffs. Well, I'm thinking of one that happened in the regular season because I was there. It was against the Chicago Blackhawks in 2009. Oh, come on, Ken. Like, don't <laughs> remind me of these nightmares, right? Brent Seabrook scored the game winner in overtime. Far side. Well, the Toros got to come out quick this period, yep. and we need to get the crowd into it and get things rolling here if the Toros want to get two points on a Saturday night. Worst is back on that one. Norseman turning along the far wall. They send that down the ice. It goes for an icing. Last thought on that Flames game. Not to not to needle you a little bit more about it, but it's kind of hard I, to needle as a Blackhawks yeah, fan right now, Ken. It is. I, but I was I was teaching at DePaul at the time, my alma mater. I had graduated a couple of years prior. I was teaching, and my class didn't end until about the middle of the first period. I get out of class and I look at my phone, and it's five nothing Calgary. And I had tickets, and my friend was meeting me down there, and he was waiting for me because I had the tickets. Oh boy! And like, and uh, like, well, do you even want to bother going? And he's like, well, I'm already down here. I'm like, all right, well, DePaul's campus is walking distance from the United Center. I'll, I'll hustle over and ended up watching one heck of a comeback win. <laughs> well, I'm glad you went. Yeah, <laughs> this is Woogie. With help from Casey, tries a shot. That goes wide. Another one rung around to the near. Kept at the point. Woogie fires it to the far side. No one over there for the Toros. Norseman send this down the ice. It's out of the reach of Woogie, but he was close enough to negate the icing. Near side, Dawson. Did touch it. Did tip it into the zone. Far side, Muller working. Keeps it away from a couple of Norsemen until the Toros can help out. It's tipped away from Knox, though, and Blue going the other way. Two on one. Blue sliding breakup nicely by Gibbs. And then they go into the wall together after Gibbs regains his feet. Casey, three on three the other way. He gives to Dawson. Dawson just chips it deep. Toros want to change. Near side. Pass fired ahead. Into the zone comes Hagen. Moe tries a shot. Shrug save made by Sweden. And that save by Sweden, a perfect example we were talking about earlier, how he doesn't get beat high despite his small stature. He is very good at popping back up quickly. He does. He like bodies up. Yep. Yeah. This is Mahler has trouble. And Christ will go the other way. Taken over by Ty James. Tossed to the near side. Toros work their way into the zone. And that will go four. And it was an offside. Offsides brought to you by our friends at Pinnacle Express. Where are we at on over-under tonight, Ken? Um, let's see. We need Toro's defenseman goals, which is Zero. certainly an under for sure. Special teams goals, we haven't seen one. And that's for either team. And goals allowed, we're at under as well. So right now, three unders. Has that happened this year? Probably no. not. I don't think so. Two on the road next weekend for the Bismarck yep. Bobcats and then home April 13th, Saturday night for the final regular season finale for the Toros. Toros control the draw. Dumped in far side, Bear. Bear lost it along the wall. Puck chipped to the near side. Jam play doesn't go. This is Gardner leaving. Oogie dumps it down low for Bear. Bear trying to get it to the front, but it's blocked off. And then sent down the ice. Armors up. This will go for an icing. Icing's brought to you by our friends at Minot's Finest Collision Center.
four minutes into the third here, Ken, and I, I can't say that we've fallen the rhythm yet. It's yeah. still that back and forth style that St. Cloud game plan for the weekend. It's let's make this a, Just a difficult game. Toros, unfortunately, we don't have shot averages like we used to. Hopefully we'll get those soon as we make the continue to make the switch over to the new league stat keeping site but Toro's just 20 shots on goal and that to me feels pretty low for this group touched up top long shot by Gibbs is blocked to the corner we just haven't had sustained pressure in the no. offensive zone at all tonight that was one of our home key group keys to the game in the Farmers Union pregame show far side Emmons takes that away jams it back to the point Gibbs Looking for a lane, doesn't have one. The shot's blocked up and out of play. We've got Zephyr 530 on YouTube, tuned in from Camino, California. Dorothy and Mike Small in Orland Park, Illinois. Troy Hicks in Tennessee. Pete Spolarich, former penalty box crew member. Now living down in Florida. He agrees with you, Brad. He says he wants no part of Austin in the playoffs. Too much PTSD from past oh, yeah. seasons. There was that three-year run where they bounced the Toros from the playoffs. Every season. This is up top. Woogie just didn't catch it cleanly. That's not something you see from him often. This drop for Coleman, shot blocked by traffic. Emmons looking to turn. Chops it to the far side. Small gathers, working on Bradley. Turns back. Small plays to the middle. Bouncing puck will be taken over by Coleman. He looks up ice. Pass too hot to handle for Wayman. Near side, Emmons rolls it deep into the zone, but Miller's back on it. 15-51, palindrome on the clock. Good play at the line by Moe, but his pass across for Coleman is tipped and taken away. Rugi looks up ice on the near side. Emmons met there. Small couldn't gather it in. Stahoiak lurking. It's jammed back towards the Toro zone, however, and Volk plays across for Jockums. Up ice for Emmons. Emmons into the zone, dumps it deep. Dawson will chase after it. Dawson can't get by Miller, but it's kept at the line by Casey, whose shot is blocked by Gunderson to the far wall. Dawson taken to the corner, leaves for Muller. Muller just lost it. Now he dri dives to poke, but it's taken away by Blue. Hagen Moe plays it in front. Jam shot goes off the outside of the net. Muller able to roll that out to neutral. Dawson pokes at it. And then he takes a Norseman. It was Cummings, and he dumped him into the bench. That gets the crowd going. Can the Toros take advantage? Knox with a nifty move, backhand try, blocked off. Where is it? It ends that up in barely, the net. That went right over the top of the net, fluttering. Knox has it poked away. Casey's there. Comes across. It was off the mark for Kenton and hit the referee. Woogie able to keep it, puts it to the side of the net. The tip doesn't go for Muller. Far side. Knox keeps it, tries to poke it down the wall. Eventually it's jammed out to neutral. Christ takes over. How about that hit by Dawson, though? <laughs> that is the uh, loudest that we've had the crowd tonight. The physical part of his game has grown significantly in the second half of the season, and his play overall, I think, is better because of it. Oh, Hannison, fans on a shot. And not the biggest guy in the no. world, but he handles himself very well, even taking checks. Kettenen takes that away, hands off for O'Hannison. O'Hannison looking for one-timer from Lettinen, save made, rebound, cleared out to neutral. Most of these pucks are hitting... Wyan, and I'm not trying to take anything away from him. He's made 21 right in saves, the middle. but they are peppering his chest. Now they have Mithmanga in behind the defense. Fortunately for the Toros, the pass was long. Mithmanga leaves on the near wall, thrown in front. Lettinen tried to get going, but Crane chopped it off his stick. Shot blocked in front by Ingstrup ahead for Spencer. Spencer can't keep it away from Geyer, however, and the Norsemen take over. Mahler spun down by Berg. Chopped in front of the Norseman bench. It hits the linesman. Toro Spencer into the middle. Tries a shot. Hooked into the corner by Wyan. Down low, Gardner. Toro's fans. They've been awake since that hit, trying to urge 
The hometown hero is on, but this will roll towards the net. Sweden plays it. The Toro's out to neutral to elude Spencer. Bradley, who spent the preseason last season here in Minot before ending up in St. Cloud. Sends that down the ice. Sweden to the near corner. Knox reverses it to Gibbs. Gibbs will set up behind the net. Coleman looks to flush him out. Gibbs straight up the middle. Plays to the near side. Bear pokes at it. Pops up. Gibbs plays it with a hand into the zone. The Norsemen take over. Pressure from Stahoyak. The puck up ice finds coming. Coming. Tries a shot blocker save. Rebound into the corner. Gibbs can't keep it away from Wayman. Emmons wins the battle. Spun off. Stahoyak plays for small. That was a hand pass, and the whistle does go. And then Blue takes down Emmons. Small over to greet him. And no calls. I'm okay with that, to be honest. I thought Emmons went down a little easy. <laughs> I didn't even see, I, I didn't see the end result. As we get another look at the hit by Dawson. Yeah. I, I feel the ice tilting yeah. for the Toros here. Momentum since the hit, crowds into it a little bit. It's time for the Toros to capitalize on that and and tie this game up. Draw at center. Kicks to the near side. Jockham's back on it. Ahead, he missed Emmons. This will end up on net, so no icing, and his small arrives. Lyon decides to cover. 12-01 to play here in period number two. Shots 23-22. Just 3 2 in this period. Draw to the left of Wyatt. Emmons line stays out. He'll take the draw against Mithmanga. Emmons wins it back. Jockums across for Woogie. Woogie long shot, gloved and held. No traffic in yeah. front there. Easy save for the Norseman goaltender as Emmons was tied Emmons. up with Mithmanga after. Luke, the Okinsons checking in from downtown St. Paul after watching the Wild and Golden Knights. Actually, look at NHL scores tonight. Panthers 3 2 over the wings. Wild fell to the Golden Knights 2 1. Flames up 2 1 on Blake Lazat and the Kings. This is Woogie with a shot that's blocked by traffic. Emmons taken down in the corner. Help comes from. Stahoyak guides it to the far corner. Miller takes it there and throws it down the ice. Sweden out to play, so no icing. Move to the near side. Small played it towards the blue line. It goes back to the Toro blue line. Quickly up for Small. Into the zone. That appeared to be an offside play. Can the Toros take advantage? Small holds on. Drag move. Shot. Save made. No rebound given. And then Coleman over to Small. And now Cumming comes over as well and cross-checks Small in the face. This has to draw something. They're going to take them both. They should really take Coleman too, in my opinion. He's the one who initiated all of it. Small went back after Coleman. And then Cumming jumped Small because of it. Is this a spark that you need? Is this a, is this a timing thing? Uh, maybe. I mean, Small, after he shot the puck, had fallen down and was getting up on his knees. And Coleman came over and cross-checked him in the face. Obviously, Small didn't like that. He got up and went after Coleman. And Andrew Cumming grabbed him. <laughs> yeah. It's cliche, but they always catch the retaliation, which was Small. 
And then they got the retaliation of the oh, retaliation. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, as we get another look, Small was just getting up and gets dumped down by Coleman. That's what initiated everything. I don't know. I don't know how you call that Coleman one though when you haven't yeah. called so many things tonight. No, you know, I, I, the only reason I suggest calling is because you've called, you called you the other two to, players and in, you started involved. To yeah. Far side. So we go four on four. Ty James far side dumps it down low. Casey. Casey let it go, thinking he had Mahler at the point, and he did not. You also wonder if the Toro's speed and skill may benefit from the open ice. Ty James hands to Casey. Casey gains the line, cuts to the middle, looks for Ty James, shot goes wide, rebound. To the near side, fanning on it is Geyer. Dawson there, plays down the wall for Casey. Dawson pokes it back to the point in Mahler. Mahler throws back down to Dawson. Dawson hit hard by Geyer. Puck to the near side. With Manga turned over to Knox. Knox walks in, wires, save made, rebounds loose in front, and then cleared down the ice. This will go for an icing. 10-18 left to go here in period number two. Toro still trailing 1 0. 55 seconds left. Kind of a case the of, the, of the Toros making the goaltender look big tonight, right? Yep. Ten eighteen to go, 55 seconds left on 4 on 4 play. Norseman control the draw and just flip that out to neutral. They won't be able to change as the Toros quickly attack. This is Knox. Knox. Backhand feed to the middle. Intended for O'Hannison was broken up. Quickly back up for Knox. Knox drops for Lettinen. Lettinen back for Knox who mishandled. And then Wyant gets over the top as traffic arrives. Tension going up more, Ken? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> the good news is we've been looking to our left for most of this period. We have. 9.54 left to go. Shots this period are 7-2 in favor of the Toros. And it's almost one of those nights where you feel like if we get one. Yeah. Right? I mean, it just it's building that way. But how many nights have we been sitting with 10 minutes to go this year saying if we can just get one? Right. Right? This may be the first. <laughs> It might be. They have been shut out this year, though. But I'm drawing a blank. Who ended our win streak last time? Was it St. Cloud, I believe? It may have been, yeah. Mahler, hands off far side. Ohanison shot it just wide. It was that Friday night sweep. Let's see. That Friday, the the yeah, Friday night Cloud. game. That now a shot, it's in. There we go, there's the one. Colby Volk, his 20th of his career. And that ties a franchise record for goals by a defenseman. It was building, Ken. It was building, right? Two seconds to go on the four on four. They go retrieve the puck for him as... Uh, that's, that's quite an honor as a Toro. Shot from the point that just a seeing eye shot. As the replay cuts out on you. Yeah. <laughs> oh Either boy. Either way. Emmons in to take the draw. Like we said, two seconds left on the uh, four on four. And here come the Toros again. Quickly up. Stax was looking for Jemmer. Didn't get it through. Here's the call, the goal. Oh, brought to you by Northern Plains Equipment. Tying a franchise record with 20 goals by a 
defenseman, number 91, Kobe Falk with his 20th of the season. Assisting on the goal, number 24, Yo Latinen. Time of the goal, 10 minutes, 33 seconds of the third period. So Woogie ties the franchise record for career goals by a defenseman with his 20th. That's his 17th this year. Engstrup gives to Stahoyak. Wouldn't mind seeing Woogie go ahead and break the record here. Oh. Big hit by Engstrup on Blue. Bear in. Bear driving the net, forced to the corner. Taken down hard by Worst. Pass up ice, Ty James. Banks it back, Spencer had to let it go. Bear was in offside. It's up ice for Blue. Blue over the blue line. Offsides. Drops from Ifmanga, long shot blocked up front by traffic. It was Hagen Moe, but Moe picks it up. Toros run into each other in the corner. Good read by Mahler to come across and break that up. Moe spins Spencer down. The referee getting in the way. That got out of the zone. Oh, Mo it's a delayed front. offside, so it wouldn't have counted. Okay, good. I don't know if you caught it, Ken, yeah. but during play, Coleman was climbing over the board to get into the St. Cloud bench. His teammate opens the door. He's on the door, falls straight down into oh. the door opening. I did not see that as we get a look at the Central Division standings coming into play tonight. So Bismarck will jump up to 80. Aberdeen will stay at 61. Austin will jump up to 61. 61. They'll actually jump Aberdeen yes. as the tiebreak is wins. St. Cloud and the Toros to be determined, yes. and North Iowa will drop their 43rd game of the year. And you think, I mean, literally as many games of the Toros won this year, North Iowa has lost. And yeah. I think about how often the Toros have won, I can't imagine going through that on the other end. Ugh, makes for a long season, right? They've gone final in Bismarck, eight nothing. And that's with the Popcats going 0 for 4 on the power play. <laughs> unbelievable, right? It's <laughs> unbelievable. Wow. 7.31 to go, 1-1 one, one tie as uh, mom momentum has definitely switched to the Toros here. And let's see if our theory of how we felt uh, at the TV timeout that if the Toros could just get one, maybe the floodgates will open. Casey Dawson and Muller out for the forwards for the Toros. Dumped in. Toros go back the other way. Dumped into the zone. Collision off the puck. But Dawson working down low. Trying to spin it to the front, it's cut off. It may have been intended for Casey. Near side, they continue to dig. Dawson tied up along the wall. This is Muller. Chad Muller wins a battle. Walks the circle, tries a shot. Gloved and almost he put dropped back the into goal, play. He yeah. dropped that. Well, well and dropped that. Thank goodness it fell right into the front of him and he was able to, uh, to looked, cover up quickly. And he almost dropped it five hole on himself. There was an opening there, the pads were open. Good board battle down low with Muller there. Works, her way out, works his way out into the slot and gets a good shot. 6.49 left here. And this is one where if you're the Norseman, you have to win in regulation. No, it doesn't no, matter. That's it doesn't matter, right, but you you absolutely need to hold on for you at get least a, a point. point. Yes. This is poked the other way. Coleman after it. Good recovery by Gibbs. Nope, he's going to get a call. And I, it's called a hold. 
Not a lot. Of, I mean, that's one you almost have to. Yeah. Is. The only thing, because the ref is trailing the play, I'd be interested to see how much Coleman had Gibbs oh, a stick. absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I, we don't have the reverse angle, but I would love to see how much Coleman helped, yeah. helped the referee make that call. So now we need our, our number one ranked penalty, penalty kill. kill to come through, 6.41 to go. Nope, that was all Gibbs as we get another look at the replay. <laughs> it, it was all Gibbs. And I, I actually thought Coleman hit his face on the ice yeah. too. I was a little... Draw to the right of Sweden. And right off the draw, Dysert restores the lead. Three seconds and St. Cloud goes up on Dysert's power play goal, his 17th on the season. Right off the draw. Toros actually win a draw. Knox gets a stick lift, and the winger doesn't pick up Dysert, and he's in alone. That's just poor faceoff yeah. coverage there. And Sweden went for the poke check, which is a high-risk play if it works. Great. If it great, doesn't. When it doesn't, he had no shot. No. Nope. Draw in neutral. Bear and Mithmanga, and now the Toros. Need to find a way to come back. Well, we talked about Once it last again. night. The first shift after a goal is critical, and it couldn't be more critical. Down one, 6.30 to go. This one sent down the ice. They wave off icing. It would have gone on net, so ahead. Spencer was short of center. They wave off icing again, though. Wyant plays to the far side, then thrown out. Gardner and Christ after it. They tie up, neither one ever touched the puck. Bear, up ice for Spencer. Spencer works ahead into the zone. Spencer taken down, not as violently, but in a similar way to how Coleman was with the stick wrapped around his neck. Stahoyak turns on the far wall, stacks. Couldn't work free, now this one chopped down the wall. Stahoyak keeps it moving, Spencer after, delivers a big hit on Lindahl. Emmons takes it away, tried to play it to the front, but it's blocked off. Puck squirts to the near corner, Lindahl. Pressured, hit hard by Emmons, and the puck taken away. Emmons finds Small coming on a chain, shot save made, rebound back to Small, he put it wide. Far side, Stahoyak, Toro certainly swarming most of this period. Can they find a second? Emmons comes across, Woogie, shot blocked. Puck out to neutral. Woogie turns it back up. Small into the zone. Small trying to feed it through for Emmons. It's blocked off and then jammed out to neutral. And this is an offside play for a whistle. Emmons and Miller tied up. Shots 10-4 in favor of the Toros here in the third period, down by one late. Casey in to take the neutral zone draw against Gunderson. This is Knox, up ice splits the defense. Knox shot, that flutters wide. Did that go off the goaltender's stick? Muller with a big hit. Don't believe so. This is Dawson, just the way it fluttered. Big hit on Muller, Muller driven from into the boards. Take the power play, Casey. Hopefully Casey coming in doesn't cost the Toros a power play. Well, I don't know how you, you do. You got guys tying up all over. Reese will go. So it'll be interesting to see what they call here. He's not, he's, this is gonna be more than a two. It's either a two or a 10 or a five. I'm not, five that's, would that be is very, blatant, that's a yeah. blatant one. That is, I am only saying that because the referee is talking to the score box instead of just signaling. He's gone. He's gone. 
So that means it's a two and a 10. At least. Yep. Two and a 10 for a check from behind. So Reese is done for the night. As there's only at most nine minutes and 32 seconds of hockey left. Would he be eligible for a shootout? Nope, because there's penalty of time left. I believe yep. that's a rule. If there was no penalty time left, I believe he would be eligible for a shootout. I, I could be wrong on that because that's a pretty rare instance that, yeah, that happens, but I, I believe if you're on the clock for a penalty that you're not eligible for a shootout. I mean, that would be the only reason not to send him to the room here. Lettinen on the draw for the Toros. Toros 0 for 2 on the first Western Bank and Trust power play. Norseman win the draw and send it down the ice. Norseman took the lead with a power play goal. Can the Toros answer back? Hannison sweeps it deep. It gets around to the near side. Kettenen. Kettenen down the wall. Muller keeps it moving. Ohanison. Ohanison trying to turn. Gets tied up. Worst. Brings it to the far side. Woogie hustles. Will he get there? He will not. Kobe Volk comes across to the near side. Kettenen. Kettenen chips for Muller. It was off the mark. Far side. Lindahl hoists it all the way down. Kobe Volk finds it. 115 on the first Western Bank and Trust power play. It's ahead for Lettinen. He drops for Kettenen. Kettenen plays keep away, and now he looks to set up the Toro power play. He gives to Kobe Volk. Volk back to Kettenen. Kettenen up top for Volk. Shot blocked and then cleared. Good block by Andrew Cumming up top. Rugi drops it back. 320 left in regulation. 45 seconds left on the first Western Bank and Trust power play for the Toros who trail 2-1. Casey chops it to the far side. It rolls deep into the zone. Poked at, swept to the near side. It'll get to Knox at the near point. Knox across for Mahler. Mahler back for Knox. Knox tries the far side. Casey walks in, wire save made. Rebound loose in front, doesn't go for Dawson. Dawson hands it back up top to Mahler, drops it back to Casey. Casey up top Mahler. Mahler comes across near point Knox. Knox gives to Stahoyak right back up top for Knox. Knox tries a shot tip by Dawson goes wide. Far point near point Knox. Knox finds Stahoyak in the near circle. He has a man back door. It actually caromed and got deflected. I think it caught the post. Meanwhile Casey tries a shot through traffic. Tip in front for Dawson. Doesn't go but that was a nice tip play. Just a better save by Wyan. And that'll even the even strength now. Five on five as the uh, St. Cloud Norseman kill that power playoff. 2.30 to go. Toros down by a goal. Shots 10-4 in the set in the third period. Well, we were all unders coming into this one. And into the third period. Now Toro defenseman goals over. Special teams goals is the Norseman had the power play goal over. Well, let's not go over yeah, on the Toro third one. Goal, Toro goals allowed, the only question left, two and a half. The Norsemen sit at two. Toros win the draw, quick shot. Blocker to side. Woogie tries to throw one towards the net. It deflects up and out of play for a whistle. Shots 33-25. It's been all Toros this period, except for the Tyler Dysert power play goal, his 17th of the season. Five on five, 2.24 to play. Colby Volk lined up on the near point, looking to find his 21st career Toro goal, which would be a new defenseman record. He already has number 20 tonight. Back on it, Jockums. Spun down, can't keep it away. Rugi cleans it up. Lettinen kicks it free. to the near side. Pass ahead, missed Lettinen, but it ends up on net for a whistle. Lettinen applies pressure, which forces Wyan to hold on. Toro's 9-2-0 against the Norsemen this season. Two of those wins came in extra time. One in a shootout, one in overtime. 
So the Norsemen 7-2-2 two two against the Toros. Timeout taken by the Toros, 157. So do you leave the goalie in the bench on this one, Ken? I think you have him at the hash marks, and you wait to see who wins the faceoff. Yeah, I think it's probably the safest thing right now, right? If it were one There's minute. There's still, yeah, one minute one different minute, story. Yeah, but 157, I think you can afford the maybe seven, eight seconds yeah. it takes to make that change, especially if he's already at the top of the circles. And I'm one of those guys that, like, I, I like about a minute 30 I pull my goalie, right? Yeah. Well, and I talked about it last night that the Norsemen typically have been a team that pulls their goalie early, and then, of course, last night they, <laughs> they didn't. didn't. <laughs> but that's how it always goes, right? When you're yeah. up in the booth here and you're, you're talking about the averages of what you've yeah. seen this year, and it goes that way, right? So we will see what Cody Campbell does. Right now, Lucas Sweden still on the ice side of the boards. So I imagine... We'll see him go back. Well, maybe not. He's still hanging out by the bench. And he will jump in. Exactly because we said we would do it the <laughs> other way, right? <laughs> oh. Emmons to take the draw. He's been, He's been I think, our zone, most yeah. physical player tonight. Yeah. And as much, I love Jemmer, but he's kind of an undercover rat. Chad yeah. Muller draws all the attention, but it, John Emmons has a little bit of that to his game as well. I shouldn't He's say He's a little quieter about yeah. it. Emmons on the draw to the blocker side of Wyant. Emmons, it goes sideways, hammered off the glass and out. It's going towards the net. Lettinen back on it. Lettinen spins it behind for Woogie. Woogie trying to keep it away. I'm surprised they have three forwards up on the forecheck with the Toros net empty. They do take it away. Shot for the empty net, blocked out front by Woogie. And now it goes to Casey. Toros look to go the other way. Casey banks it into the zone. Emmons punches it deep. Kettenen after it. Can't get there. Ohanison throws it down the wall. Worst gets it off the glass and out. This should go for an icing as long as Woogie wins the race, which he does. A little casual by Woogie getting back after that. Oh, and you want you want to get back quick too because that's seconds off the yep. clock, right? So the draw will be again to the right side of Lyon. Timeout St. Cloud. Timeout taken by St. Cloud. So I'm gonna bring up something that sounds crazy. Is it good? Do you think, okay, we have not had a tremendous amount of games this year where we're down a goal in the final five minutes of, a, uh, of the game. How many times do you remember the Toros having to pull the goalie, win a face off with a minute to go to tie the game up? Is this a good experience going into the playoffs? I think so. I mean, we've had a few. Uh, one that they successfully did, it comes to mind, was against St. Cloud in St. Cloud. Uh, as part of that nine game win streak okay. before. But yeah, it hasn't been a lot. I mean, when you only lose, and the Toros are 42, 12, and one. Yeah, so you don't get a lot of opportunities you lot when of, you um, lose 12 games, and, right? And those 12 games. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. We're not getting the opportunity, so is this good? I mean, <laughs> not that I want to lose, but if we're going to go down, it's probably better to have this opportunity than it is to go down five yeah. to two, right? Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to lose, credit is a learning, you know, to, to learn from these. Draw will be to the right of Wyan once again. Emmons, Casey, Kettenen, Ohanison, Lettinen, Colby Volk. Emmons won the draw back, but Jack Christ took it away and chipped it. Down to the Toro zone, letting it haul down, and that's going to draw a call. Toros will get a six on four. <laughs> we'll take it, I guess, right? Because if if they don't call a penalty there, it's, it's three game to one. Over. Yep. Well, and 
It was a pretty clear takedown. It was, yes. It, it, that wasn't a soft call. Kind of one of those half the calls, yeah. right? Because again, that, that changes. So now the Toros don't have a timeout. No. What? I mean, hindsight's 20-20, yeah. right? One oh seven left. So we'll see a six on four here. The only downside, of course, is that they can ice the puck at will here. Yeah, they can send it down the ice. You don't get the free up. And they also get free shots at the empty net. Lettinen and Lindahl on the draw. Lays free and they do send it down the ice. It's headed for the empty net. It'll go wide. Final minute of play in regulation. Volk to the far side, finds Ohanison into the zone. Ohanison banks it to the near side. Ohanison holds, plays up top for Kobe Volk. Volk, far side, gives to Kettenin. 42 seconds left, plenty of time. So the Toros look to set it up. Casey up top for Woogie and he mishandles it. Now the Toros have to regroup. Kettenin into the zone, hands off Casey. Casey comes across for Colby Volk, shot, save made, no rebound given. 24.8 left. In regulation. Power play struggle tonight. We finally get it set up and then we can't control the blue light on that one. That's, that, 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 that's a tough break. Draw will be to the right of Wyant. 24.8 seconds to go. Letting in and coming on the draw. Shots 35 25 in favor of the Toros. Draw one back to Woogie. Woogie gives to Kettenin. Kettenin back to Woogie. Quickly across for Ohanison into the middle. Letting in fanned on it. And it's chopped out to neutral. Just 14 seconds. Toros have to hurry. Kettenin gains the line. Flicks into the middle. Casey. Towards the front, it's blocked off. Five seconds, near side. Kettenin throws it in front, it's loose. Tip doesn't go, still loose in front. And it's under a Norseman player, and the horn sounds. The win streak dies at nine again. And now two whacks at Muller. Oh, and he got speared. Coleman speared him. Coleman speared him. They better have video on that one, because yeah. that's a spear. Toros fall 2-1. That was a clear spear. It was, and Chad Muller telling the official about it. But Toros fall 2-1. And for the second time this season, the St. Cloud Norsemen end a Toro's win streak at nine and a huge win for the Norsemen. <laughs> and 10 just yeah. seems to be too big of a hill to climb. It does. <laughs> but, you know, if your biggest problem in a season is that you have multiple win streaks oh, end at nine. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I've seen the other way, yet, yes. where we've had losing streaks, right? So. So, Toros fall two to one. Well, not the result we wanted nope. this weekend, but two out of four. Here's Liberty Tax, three stars. Your Liberty Tax, third star of the game, number 24, Yo Lightning. Lightning had the assist on Woogie's goal. 
And your second star of the game with 23 saves, number 38, Lucas Suarez. And tying the career mark for Goldsberg and Toro, your first star of the game, Colby Vol. And that's your Liberty I've talked tax. about it several times this season, but did you see the look on Hoogie's face when he came to throw that T-shirt for three stars? Yep, he looked like he was mad because they lost, right? Which is what the look I yep. want, right? Right, I, and that's, you know, they're announcing that he just tied the career mark for goals by a defenseman at 20. A personal accolade. He sets a franchise or ties a franchise record. The win streak died at nine. Yep. And he looks on his the look on his face is like we just got knocked out of the postseason, right? Like. <laughs> I I I totally agree with what you're saying, but. And that is exactly what you want to see. You want to see, right? right? Yeah. So the Toros fall two to one. Recap it quickly. Michael Coleman, 13.57 into the first from Lewis Wayman. Makes it 1 0. Kobe Volk, his 17th of the year, 20th of his career from Lettinen at 10.33. Makes it 1 1. And then Dysert from Coleman. Three make, seconds in on a power play. Yep, yeah, makes it 2 1, which holds as the final. Toros had power play chances, but. Couldn't get through. The power play yeah. struggled tonight. It, it, did. It, it struggled to just get g game zone time. Right? They just they could not get set up the way they properly wanted to. And when you can't get set up, it, it's tough to get those quality scoring chances. And what shots we did get on the power play were right in the chest of the goaltender. Yeah. yeah, the Toros made, at least by number, made wine work a lot. But I didn't feel like there were a ton of... Well, Desperation say we could probably count to on one hand score, yeah. score true scoring chances. Was it compared to what Manzella put up last yes. night and all those scrambling pucks that just barely missed? Yeah. Didn't quite go over the line and but were trickling past him and you know nothing like that tonight. A lot of pucks right into the goaltender's chest or glove. But the good news, even with the loss and the Bismarck win, it's still a five point spread. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's sky is pretty good falling. going yeah. into a four game, you know, four game set with the Bobcats. Yep. It's still three points the Toros need, which means one win. Because it's three points to clinch, either points gained by the Toros or lost by the Bobcats. You're right. You're right. So when the Toros win, that's also two points missed by the Bobcats. Missed by so one four win, point games, yeah. right? Yeah. One point or one win out of the last four games in the Toros will win the Central Division. That said, looking at this weekend, the Bobcats are rolling. It's it's we, not going to be an easy task going down there this weekend for two. No, not at all. Are they, I mean, the Bobcats would be I mean, it's it's crazy to say this, Ken, because we're coming off a nine game win streak. But is there a hotter team in the in the divi or in the league probably than than the Bismarck Bobcats right now? It's it's close, right? You you look at their last ten. They've been playing well as well. They were coming into play. They've won six in a row, eight one and one in their last ten. And actually, that's including tonight now. So eight one and one in their last ten. Winners of six in a row. Toros now technically losers of one in a row but after a nine game win streak you'll you, you can still smile right yeah and uh the thing with the bobcats is they've been putting up goals at, a, at an unbelievable pace and and the differential has just been enormous in in their games so the toros fall still 42 13 and one on the season four games left Obviously now you still have to you still have to play your lineup. You know, we had, yesterday we were talking about when do you rest? I, I Until you get that one, you've got to play your guys. Oh, absolutely, and you because you know Bismarck's going to be playing their guys because right. there's no doubt in my mind Bismarck's coming into next weekend saying, "Shoot, there's no reason why we can't sweep." Right. They sweep next weekend. It's 85-84. Yeah. Going back to Bismarck on Friday. Exactly. So it's it. 
you know, this is a big week for the Toros here and, and a week where they got to get sure some things up in practice, have some good confident practices and, and hit an hour and a half south of, of Minot for a big weekend. It will be a big weekend. We'll be live at the VFW both nights and hopefully bring you a better result than tonight. But again, certainly not sky is falling time no, by no. any means. And no, nope, you're not going to win every single game. It's it's, it a, it's a, a hard division. It wasn't a pretty weekend, and I think it's a good reminder, if anything, from a Toro's perspective, you know, yeah, ourselves included, we were a little ahead of ourselves perhaps yesterday talking about who do you want in the first round. What? Yeah. I don't, and it, I don't think there's anyone you want in this division at any time. <laughs> you know no, what I mean, I, mean I, I, can find, I can find things that scare me about every single team in this division. Yeah. And that's a credit to the Central Division, which over the last 13 years that I've followed it is, has been strong year in and year out, putting together, you know, playoffs where 1-4 is not a cakewalk at all. So, yeah, the Norsemen, you know, it's very rare that we have a team like North Iowa in the division, right? A few years ago, Brookings was pretty bad when they were, the last yeah. year they were in Brookings before they moved to St. Cloud, but it's very rare that we have teams that are are that punching bag. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. I know you're. I know what you're yeah, saying. Twenty eighteen. Thing... Twenty eighteen. The Toros were in last place in the division in February and ended up going to the Robertson Cup championship game. So, <laughs> as a division, it's usually a pretty strong division, not just at the top end, but all the way through. Yeah. So we're usually talking two points separates four and five. Yeah. So. It, it's a grind every year, and it's it's a it's a physical battle, man. These kids show up in late August, and uh, if things go well, we don't uh, we don't say goodbye until mid May, right? That's the hope. But that should do it for us. For Grayson Ammon, camera Kobe Brault's directing, Sean Bakoven doing the switching, and Josh Carlock on PA. Brad Burrood was alongside. I'm Ken Oda. Hoping you enjoyed the broadcast. We'll talk to you next Friday from the VFW in Bismarck, hopefully bringing you a Toro's win and a Central Division Championship.